Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm-mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Hello and welcome to the Black Dog Podcast number 298. Hooray. Oh, two to go. Right on the cusp. Just It's just rolling around the ring. We're almost on the vinegar strokes. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> the eyes are starting to twitch. <laughs> Roll up in your head. You're almost falling off the chair. <laughs> At that point where you're thinking, is it really worth it? Yeah. Can I get there? Can I get there? Yeah. Yeah, do I do I do I have the stamina for the final push? Is it worth it? Mm-hmm. And is that someone coming down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm Lee. Quick, put the catalogue away. I'm Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm Elton. <laughs> and this week we'll be reviewing Littlewood's calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be infinitely better if we actually were reviewing in Littlewood's calendar, but um, yeah, sadly we're not. Um, we are reviewing Mac and Me as the first of our sad vent calendar um, <laughs> entries. Uh, every every year the Black Dog does something different for Christmas. This is no oh, different. You're fucking welcome. Yeah, you're you're absolutely <laughs> welcome. You're welcome to it. So. Um, yeah, before we get to that, uh, let's find out what everyone's been doing this week. And uh, this week we will start with uh, you, Elton. How's your week been, sir? Uh, it's been uh, quite a chilled week. Haven't really done much to, to uh, speak of, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just been, in my moments of quietness, I've been playing GTA V because I love that game. I flipping love it. Yeah. I can just drive around for hours and hours, just doing mindless crap, uh, <laughs> just just for shits and giggles. It's just a great way to blow off steam. Right. And also, what did I do? I also watched a film that I haven't seen for a long, long time. Yeah. I just tickled my fancy. I've Mac and me. It. No. <laughs> no. No. This this is well, a, pa- a palate cleanser for that. Okay. Go on. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. I haven't seen it. Fucking ages, man. Yeah. And I love that film. I love that film so much. I don't know if we've... This is my rifle. This is my gun. Have we ever reviewed that? No. Nope. I don't Actually. think so. I'm not entirely sure if we ever have. Or if we have. I can't remember. No. Nam we... season. Nam. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Let's do it. Can we end it with... Oh, no. We can't end it with Tropic Thunder, can we? Why no. not? Why not? Or can we? Oh, okay. That's ham season, isn't it? Sorry, that's ham season. Yeah, well well done. Yeah, I'm not pressing that button. (laughs) (laughs) I had I had too many complaints from people going, "Oh God, it's too loud," and I can't be sure what volume it's going to come out at. It's right. We still start whistling later. Yeah, that's it. (whistles) I'm going to suck coke out of the ground. (whistles) (laughs) Here's my flower. I'm I'm whizzing off me tits on that spartamine. (whistles) <laughs> have some skittles while I'm sitting outside of Wix. Hold on, uh, no, no, stop, stop. stop. Wait, wait. Back, the, <laughs> back that truck up. <laughs> anyway, so so you've been on. You've been so. I'm sensing from GTA and Full Metal Jacket, you've you've got some anger management you've been dealing with. Is that true? Oh uh, well. I hadn't thought about it until then, but yeah, I suppose that was just <laughs> trying to wrestle that. But I, I subconsciously didn't know that it was there. Um, mm. But yeah, man, I was definitely doing that. Uh, there, there's a, a certain uh, vibe that you get. It, it's mm. a certain hunger that you, you can tame by punching a person from <laughs> the back uh, without them knowing. It's just a, a beautiful, beautiful thing that people should really try at least once in their life. Uh, I think I think you should get Assassin's Creed Syndicate and run then run around Victorian London stabbing people in the spines. I would like it's getting that time where you can't buy yourself any more stuff now, isn't it? If you, if you come home with a brand new game, it's oh yeah. oh 
really, I wasn't going to buy you that, but you know, why are you buying that? Yeah. Oh god, yeah. Do you get you get the eyebrows raised up? Why did you do that? Yeah. Well, daddy can do it. Why can't I? Oh, no. God. No, you can't. No. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, no, no, very boring for me. Okay, fair enough. Well, then we shall move on to you, Jim. How's your week been, sir? Uh, fairly busy. Um, yep. It's been probably one of my busiest times of the year, putting together the now traditional and uh, <laughs> famous Hypnagoria Christmas specials. Nice. Um, I think it's about seven podcasts coming out this month in all, so very, very busy. <laughs> That's, that is wow. busy. That is pretty damn busy. You're making us <clears throat> all look bad. Yeah. I know. Shame on you. Shame on us. Cold for you lot. <laughs> Do you not need to be getting back? I mean, you, are we like interrupting something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's at least two episodes of this box of delights he hasn't quite finished watching yet. <laughs> oh, you know, they're done. <laughs> oh, they're done. Fantastic oh, they're work. They're done. Oh, wow. I've only got one to do now. Oh, excellent. Well, one and a half. Oh, right. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Cool. Okay. And uh, other than that, I've been trying to fit in my Christmas shopping, and I thought, bloody hell, it's December. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, it kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have this problem. Of, like, what do you get your mum and dad? They just go, yes. oh, I don't really want anything. I've got everything. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> and you know, they're going to spend on you despite them every year going, we should all just spend a fiver each. And they always don't. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, I know my mum. Um, she loves uh, her garden. She loves the birds that come to it. Mm. Uh, she's got foxes and hedgehogs and all the various other wildlife that come in from the field mm. behind the garden. And I know she's been sort of umming and ahhing about getting a camera. So I mm. did some research and started looking at sort of wildlife cameras, and I came to the conclusion that if you stick the word wildlife or bird in front of a outdoor camera kit, you can charge up to 70 quid more for a <laughs> 10 years out of date product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I but you were going to say I... something about dogging there for a minute. I really did. <laughs> uh, that's another story. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mm, okay. um, yeah, I, I learned last night just on a complete tangent that mm. apparently that um, uh, there was a secret code to let other people know in suburbia if you were a swinger, oh, and yeah. that was having pampas grass in your front garden. So really? uh, if anyone's parents had pampas grass in their front garden growing up, maybe maybe ask a few questions over Christmas dinner <laughs> after a few drinks. You well, never I... know what you might find out. Well, actually... maybe you don't want to. <laughs> and... yeah, I remember where we lived. There's a lot of lot of lot of places had pampas grass. All <laughs> if you, if my you... mum wanted some, my dad wouldn't let her. Now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you just excuse me for a second, I've got to go out in the garden and uh, get some, get do some weeding. Just, just give me a second. <laughs> I think the previous owners. <laughs> oh God, that explain a lot about the carpet. That sticky. Oh no. <laughs> <And> he... <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Let's see, something you learn every day, children. Absolutely. Educational and informative. <laughs> if you Not are in that order. <laughs> if you are after a present for your old man, uh, I bought my dad. Um, Flashlight? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I can't top that now. <laughs> no, I, th I think that's about, I think that's, I think, you know, that was it. Get, get, him, get him a... Get him a monthly subscription sort of voucher to you porn. You want to scare the shit <laughs> out of him? Get him a double ended flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a picture. I just keep winking at him and high fiving him. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up to Father and Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we're both fathers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh God. I'm taking notes down for the, for the headers in, in this week, and I've just got Father's Day flashlight. <laughs> gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, or taking. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Um, well, go on. Was there anything you were actually going to suggest? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I was actually going to throw it open. Shh. Don't tell her, but if anyone could recommend me a good sort of security camera with infrared and a motion sensor that's wireless that can transmit a picture, say, so she could, like, record and watch things on a little tablet. Mm. 
tear away from angry birds and other things she's addicted to. Mm. Uh, I'd be most pretty because I've been going through all kinds of things going, that looks good, that's good, but oh, it's a pensioner, will she be able to use that? Is that too complicated or is that too yeah. shit? And you get a point where you're going through Amazon reviews, you go, this is good. Oh, it's a one star review. This is terrible. Everyone else is a liar. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> going, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> That's the worst. Bloody every time you you think that's perfect, absolutely perfect. This is what I'm going to get. I shall buy it now. And you think actually, there's two one star reviews. Let's have a look at that. The end fell off and it burst into flames. <laughs> oh fuck! But there's six thousand five star reviews, but that one <laughs> is going to destroy me. Especially if it's well written and paragraphed. Uh, yeah, if there is no, if, if there's correct capitalization and grammar, it's yes. like, oh shit, there is there's someone with some intellect saying that. If someone's using technical terms, forget it, you know, yeah. heed the warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, well, I, I suppose put it on the Facebook group, you know, what can we get, what can we get parents and uh, parents for, for 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 Christmas? I think that's a good. I think that's a good question to throw out there. I'm sure it's, we'll get. It's tough, isn't it? It's tough. Mm. Yeah, it is actually <laughs> very tough. So, what about anything else, sir? Or... No, that that'll that'll do me. Brilliant. Okay, fair enough. We'll come back to the Christmas shopping in a minute. So, Darren, what about yes. you, sir? How's your week been? Uh, my week's been really good, actually. Yeah. Um, this weekend, I went up to Birmingham. Mm-hmm. To visit Odile and Carl, and uh, nice. went and had a walk around the uh, the Christmas market and stuff like that, and entered a place called the Ginville. Go and mm. have a drink, and really nice bar. It's got like you know, serves something like forty different gins, and mm. uh, so I'm I'm standing at the bar talking to the barmaid there, and or the bar person I should say, mm. and uh, I say so so like you know. With all the sort of like the mix of drinks you've got here, you must have to go on a special course, surely, to memorise that lot. And she's like, yeah, yeah, we we have this guy come over and uh, he teaches her to do this, that and the other. And I'm thinking to myself, this sounds like really a scientific process. And then she pulls out this glass, sticks some ice in it, sticks some gin in it, and it just drops some blueberries, gives it a stir, and that's it, it's done. Mm. It's hey. like, so there you go, so much for the scientific process. <laughs> but um, I, I think I found the classiest men's toilet in 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 Brist uh, in Birmingham, which kind uh, of in, in this bar, which kind of implies that you were looking for the classiest. No, I, wasn't. I, I just went in there to go to Lou. And uh, first of all, they've got urinals that you can actually use to play video games with. So um, they've got like a little start button you piss on, and then you like wee from side to side to make something happen on screen whatever it was they were playing on there. Right, okay. So yeah. so so you're not really playing Pac-Man then because that would be a bit that would have that, to be hardcore. That would, yeah. But um uh, they they had the the classy man's pulling kit in uh the machine behind. Um it was a it was you could you could buy a few things in there. You could buy condoms, Twiglet mm. flavor. No, no condoms. <laughs> no, 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 you have a hold you got listen. So you could buy condoms, Davidoff aftershave, <laughs> hold on, and Tic Tacs. <laughs> so, you so you had before, during, and after there, basically. That's right. Mm. Jobs nice. are good. It, it should have been have it off aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it probably was, because I think it was one of these sort of like cheap Taiwanese machines that have got have it off. You know, and directs, yeah. directs condoms, <laughs> and tech talks, um Talk, as well. Talk ticks. <laughs> yeah, talk ticks. <laughs> or in, in the game of love, tactics. There you go. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, so thoroughly enjoyed myself there. I'm at, well, mm. until the Sunday when we, we went back to the Christmas market and we went to have uh, me and I do went to have Sunday dinner, so I was I was spotted the store that was that sold like a uh, roast mm. beef and everything inside this great big Yorkshire pudding and roast potatoes and stuff, and so I'm sitting there eating this thing, mm. and then I didn't realise that my fork had actually snapped in right. the Yorkshire pudding, <laughs> and it was only as I got it in my mouth and swallowed some of it that I realised there was like something hardened plastic in there and it's it's the bits of fork 
So I managed to retrieve all of it mm. apart from one tiny pointy bit. Right. So um, I think that was the problem I had on Sunday when I went off to the little boy's room and uh, had a sit-down meeting. Mm. That, that that was a little bit difficult to pass. Ah. But I think I know why now. <laughs> I found the point. There oh, you go. Oh. Awful. So, um, yeah. You know, so, <laughs> ah! But um, <laughs> uh, moving on swiftly from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the on the media side of things, on the what? Sorry, uh, on the media side of things. Yeah, um, I did done start watching The Expanse this week. Ah, welcome to the twenty first century. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's all because Net, uh, Netflix now allows you to download. Yeah. So um, rather than just stream, you can download uh, various bits of media they've got on there. And unlike, say, like Amazon, when they first started, had not that brilliant a content, they're actually going for, like, the big guns to begin with. So you can download mm. things like House of Cards. You can yeah. download that as well. Um, and also The Expanse. I noticed there's a lot of Netflix originals that you can download. Um, mm. The Marvel stuff you can't for some reason. I don't know why that is. Hopefully right. they'll add that to the roster. Yeah. But, well, um, it's got to be then, rights. That's all that is. That'd, that'd be Disney, wouldn't it? Yeah. If the rights yeah, but it, it. it's still down as a Netflix um, a created show. So. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's a that's a very long and windy path, a windy path basically, because you rights and who owns the rights to it? Because I mean, Netflix may have paid for it, but Marvel yeah. still own it. I oh, yeah, I I imagine that was probably one of those things where it's just like. No, no, they they won't let them have it. But um, well, he is hoping because they are adding more content as they go. It's only just started, but I think it's a really good start. Um, I mean, even things like Narcos is download as well. That's on there, so I'm, I'm yeah, but looking forward to that's watching Netflix, that. That's Netflix original, so that's not surprising, really. Indeed, mm. indeed. But it's a show that I've got a lot of the guys in work keep going on about. Mm. And things like Breaking Bad as well. The whole five seasons of that mm. is is down for download nice. on Netflix. So, again, you know, I can catch up with that. But um, getting back to The Expanse, yeah, I mm-hmm. um, only watched a couple of episodes so far, um, and I'm I'm actually quite enjoying it. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where it's all going to go. Mm. Uh, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> I've got a bit of a sore throat. Nice. Um, Thomas Jane, I think, is really, really good in it. Yeah. I, you, you're not quite sure what's – I mean – He's he's a bit like um, I don't know. Can you describe him as Denzel Washington in Training Day? <laughs> you know, he's that he's that kind of he's that yeah. kind of copper. Yeah, not exactly spotlessly no clean, but not totally evil or anything. He kind of gets the job done. Yep, that's, I mean that's I think that's fair enough. He he's yeah, yeah he is definitely a. A, a a a well worn trope of of detective. Let's put it that way. Indeed. Now mm. I've got really not that much of a complaint about the show. The mm. only thing, and this is from a totally geeky sort of point of view. Yeah. For the show, uh, the sort of the sort of quality of program you've got there with the expense. Mm. I'm watching it, and they've they've done the whole thing of noise in space with the engines. Yeah. Now, I mean. You know, as I say, it's not a big niggle, but it's kind of like, oh, I thought you would have done something like they did in Firefly, where instead of having the engine noise, you had music playing instead. Yeah. So it, it kind of, you know, anybody who's used to hearing rocket sounds and stuff like this is kind of lulled. Yeah, I, to be quite honest, I, I think that's been, it's such a trope that I don't think it's such a big deal. And to be quite honest, it does everything else does everything else really quite well i mean oh the gravity the way they handle gravity yeah. and stuff like that on the the ships and when there's a, a scene where thomas jane's pouring a, a drink and it's the way the water flows through mm. the grav on the on the station yeah i like that, that mm. that's really really cool yeah so um yeah so looking forward to watching the rest of that um and another show i managed mm. to start watching is westworld okay so um yeah, I really like that. I, I I think it's a bit of a marmite show. There are people who really like it and people who don't. Mm. I don't think there's any sort of mid ground where this is concerned. I'm I'm in the really like it camp. 
Okay. Well, I haven't I haven't actually seen any of it because again, it's one of those things where I just kind of think yeah, I I I got I got a sneaky suspicion I'll either you know, one way or another I'm going to fucking find out all about it cuz everyone seems quite intent on talking about it. So No, uh, <laughs> I've not really seen any uh, any spoilers for it at all. No. Okay. No, I've just seen people giving it thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. So um but yeah, I mean, it's got a really good cast in it, mm. uh, especially I mean, Sir Anthony Hopkins. As well, I mean, he is playing Sir Anthony Hopkins. Well, he hasn't he hasn't changed that in many ways because he <laughs> was he was in the, the the Transformers trailer today. Yeah, oh, dude, really... fuck off. Yeah, he's in. I've seen it, but fuck off. Yeah, Just fuck off. yeah, we've yes. lost Optimus Prime again. Really? Oh, is he dead again? Oh no, never knew that. Oh, There's a lot of laughs in that universe. So yeah. this is the last night. Yeah, yeah. The last, the last time I'm going to watch a trailer for Transformers. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I think, I think what happens is when they're they have the big reveal night. scene in the film, though. Does it blow the entire plot <coughs> of the film? Oh, pretty like much. it shows you when they take the back off him and take out the two AA batteries, rub them together, and put them back in, and he comes back to life. Yeah, something like that. I mean, it's pretty much. Oh, it's such bollocks. It really is. It's the it's the only it's the only show where uh, the only uh, show I'm talking about the only film trailer where I watch a trailer and I go hmm that's nice effects hmm that's nice effects and then it end and I go hmm what did I just watch <laughs> it, I have no idea I cannot remember a single fucking thing so um, yeah no I couldn't give a toss. Someone, someone on the Facebook on the Facebook group just went, "Oh, I wonder if they're doing Unicron." It's like I could not give a shit. I really... I they're going to do one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there you go. Mm. But um, yeah. Moving swiftly on from the Transformers. Oh yes. Let's you know, this, this, this just think about Guardians of the Galaxy. That trailer, the new one, Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Oh, was wash having... your wash your brain out with that. There oh, you go. I was having a bit of a crisis. That was such a good fucking trailer well I'm going to go it hunting is. for that one I haven't seen that one the only other one I've seen is The Mummy no no what Tom run Tom run oh, oh look it's fucking appalling yeah run I've again Tom I've not seen any of that it's and almost like that. the news has come back <laughs> <laughs> run Tom run anyway Tom. yeah I, I, it was just it was as fast just... as your little legs can carry you again again <laughs> Tom, yep. run again, Tom. Here we go. Tom's running. Oh, there's a zombie. Oh, Tom's still running. Still running. Trailer ends. Can somebody stop Tom running? <laughs> Trailer ends. You can take him up the hamster wheel now. And <laughs> take him up the hamster wheel. Euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So is, um, um, the the Guardians of the Galaxy is there a second trailer or is it the official first trailer? A Guardians of the Galaxy two trailer. It should have a picture of Groot. Yes, on the front as a. Thing. Okay, right. I'm going to disappear for three minutes. Are you, are you going to disappear for three minutes? Do you want? Should we just pause for a second while you watch it? Go on, him. Yeah, let's watch. Let's albatross it. We haven't albatrossed for ages. There will now be a short intermission. Right, okay, so Elton, you've seen the trailer, and? Hey, it's bloody good, isn't it? It's good fun. It, yeah, I think I might even dive into the cinema for that, so yeah, man, I'm, Ooh, I'm up for that. Pubcast, 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 pubcast. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Hey, nice. A whole a proper Black Dog podcast. We haven't had one of those in yonks. You no, should, we haven't. You okay, get... let's, let's do it for this one, then. Yeah. There you go, May 2017, a pubcast. Everyone's going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, well, so you liked it then? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. That was all that was for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, Darren, <laughs> what else yes. is going on in your... <laughs> Sorry, the wheels are coming. Go on. Hello. Hello. Nope. 
Right, sorry, you just made you went, Darren. You, you, and I couldn't understand it. Darren, what did you said after that? No, that's fine. That's because uh, the wheels are coming off. It's fine. okay. The wheels Go on. Off. Okay. So, just one more thing on yes. the games front. Um, yes. it, it, I picked up a game that went backward compatible on Xbox One this week. Go on. Um, and that was Injustice: Gods Among Us. Uh, okay. Which is which is the DC superhero beat 'em up. Yeah, I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Have you actually played it? Yeah. Uh, how far did you get into it? Um, I got about halfway in, but I play. I I tried the easy mode and fought Superman and didn't fight. Didn't feel like I was fighting Superman. I was just fighting Ken from Street Fighter. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Well, Go I on. just played it on standard setting. And I've been through it, and I'm mm. just enjoying more. I, I don't I, the beat 'em up parts. I'm not too bad on, um, but I'm enjoying the the actual story that's running through the whole single player thing. Yeah. So um, you know, it's just like having a DC animation. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I I I played it and I I found the fighting was a pain in the ass, and yeah. the story was nice, but I preferred the comic intro version, which you know, in the actual comics. Yeah, when Superman does what he does before it all goes wonky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought that was good, but the the game it wasn't really my thing. I... It depends on who you're using. I I mean, I found Batman was the worst one to use. If I got to be totally yeah. honest, for the person, you know, for the the one character that's really sort of like physical combat based, um, he was the worst one to use. But I found Deathstroke to be one of the best ones. He's he's one single move that he's got, the heavy move, just happens so quickly. You can literally take down anybody with it. But but the problem with all those sort of fighting games, though, especially ones with with superheroes in it, is it always comes down to you do eventually have to kill a superhero, and it's and you just it just doesn't feel right, especially when especially when you do face down Superman. It's all. Each each of the endings, I did end up watching the endings, but it just feels like a cheat. Um, well, the good guys don't actually kill. When you, you do get the chance to play the bad guys in the stories as well, because you need to have them progressing various bits and bobs. But um, it's more when you play something like you know you play Wonder Woman, she faces off against a doppelganger. She more takes her down. You don't really see her kill anybody so mm. whether there is any death going on from the good guys i don't know but i mean they're taking out bad guys so yeah you know what the yeah. hell it's their own bad version mm. i mean can you class that as committing suicide i don't know i don't know <laughs> it's self-harm anyway yeah exactly you know. self-love Self-love, 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 self-love. Okie dokie. But um, yeah, it's I, I'm not finding it too bad at all. I'm getting to the end of the story now, mm. so uh, you know. Okay. Oh, we'll wait until you hit the end of the story then, and we'll talk again because I, 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 I've actually seen the entire movie for it anyway. The um, all the things put together at the end. I've been through that entire thing. I think that's what grabbed my attention in the first oh, place. Right. Okay. Maybe want to play it. So I mean, I I know what happens at the end. Okay. Fair enough. We'll, we'll talk about it another time, I think, because yes. I, I thought, yeah, um, we'll just be umming and ahhing all around it, because just in case other people are playing it. Indeed. indeed. Um, cool. Um, pff, anything else, sir? No, that was it. Just Okie okay, dokie. Right, well, um, my week, pretty quick, this one. Um, this week, I have basically... Um, been doing not an awful lot really I've been working and that's about the size of it and then I did some Christmas shopping on Saturday which was essentially like uh, it was it was one of those things where it kind of classes under it was a good idea at the time you kind oh. of go, you go out there and you think right okay well I've got to get dad um, an autobiography as long as it's someone with a cockney accent and an autobiography, then Dad's down for that, so that's cool. Ma- it's called Billy the Stabber, or yeah, something, or like, something that, like that. Yeah. yeah. And then I looked at. Then it's like, oh, get Mum some perfume, right? Okay, fine, get Mum some perfume. And I sort of had a budget, and I went out and and I went to the perfume counter, 
And the they, the lady said, oh, you, are you buying perfume for anyone in particular? I went, oh, yeah, my mum. I know what she wants. I'm just going to get it. Okay, well, the uh, medium-sized bottle starts at £75. <laughs> and I went... Really? I went, the medium <laughs> size. So uh, what about the small? And she went, oh, well, the small. And it was like... You know, it's like, oh, if you're getting it for your mum and you're going to get the small, you cheap bastard. Yeah, you uh, pathetic loser. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, but 75 quid's like half my budget for the whole fucking lot. You know, it's <laughs> what you want, what you want from me, woman. And she's, and she went, you can have this. And no joking, she pulled out something that was... Well, basically, I think you could have fitted it into one of those like little HP USB sticks. It was literally like right. the size of someone's thumb, and it was like, it was like, okay, fine. Um, and how much is that? And she went forty-five pounds. What was the what was the perfume? J'adore. J'adore. Well, you see now, what you got to do is you got to you got to lower your sights a bit there, and you've got to go for something like you know you want to get your the most. Je Dave. <laughs> No, you, you go for something like, I don't know, Danny Dyer's Clunge or something like that. <laughs> you know, so um, Clunge by Danny Dyer. Oh, yeah, the smell of it, you slag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tracy Beaker's Minge. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God. Yeah, I, 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 it should have been something like that. I, I should have done, but the problem is... The worst. They, they sell Daddy Dyer's Clunge by the gallon. By the way, <laughs> right? Okay. Back truck up the, up the. Yeah, you know, you know those plastic bottles you get petrol in. Right? Okay, <laughs> they sell it in those. <clears throat> Sarsaparilla from down the market. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> damn market. But um, no, the problem is that Mum knew. I, I knew what Mum had, so it was like, oh, balls. So I so I ended up getting basically guilted into buying the seventy five quid one. Fucking hell fire. And then it was like suddenly I had to rearrange my sights for everything else. And it's like, yeah. okay, well I tell you what, I'm gonna get dad like two autobiographies, so I'm gonna get him two autobiographies. I went in there and there's like, Oh, there's a football biography and I know I've heard him talk about this bloke. I don't know if he likes him or not, but I've heard him talk about this bloke. Get that. And it's like, that's twenty quid. And it's like so hold on. Uh, uh, and then it's like, oh, I want, I wanted to get him the other one as well. Okay, so now I'm into forty notes. I've done a hundred and ten fucking notes. I've only got two people's presents. It's like shit. What? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad, bad man. Sorry. What? <laughs> what just appeared on my oh, chat wall? <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I would really, really, really like to tell you what it is, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh god, we are going oh, to hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hell. That's all you need to know. Um. <laughs> so yeah, so I basically had done like massive wadge of cash and it was like oh, great so um so that was fun and then on top of that on on top of that it's like i'm going around with with katie and she's like showing me all these things and she's telling me all these things that you know certain people would like and all this sort of stuff so she's taking me into shops that i don't even know i didn't even know existed and it's like oh great now where am i going what am i doing and basically i ended up skint and pulling me back out and carrying around a load of stuff. So I was feeling really great. Um, but on Sunday, went to London Zoo, which was quite nice. Met up with a couple of um, Carol's relatives, mm-hmm. which was quite cool. Um, went around London Zoo, um, and it was quite surprising because, like, there you are in London Zoo thinking, right, we're going to see some animals. And then you realise it's like two degrees you're freezing yep. your bollocks off. And you know what? Guess what? All the animals don't want to come out. So no. it's like you're walking past you're walking past things going There's an empty cage and a tail hanging out. There's an empty cage and a tail hanging out. 
There's another empty cage. Oh, there's the cage with a paw hanging out. But eventually, we get round to the lions. And they've just put in a new enclosure in London Zoo for the lions. And in the li- in the lion's cage, they've got like big floor-to-ceiling kind of big glass paint. And this, you know, proper lion, he's up against the glass. And it's like, oh, wow, you know, this is amazing. You know, he's, he's literally lying against the glass. And I thought, well, if, if there's anything, you know, if there's any way of being able to sort of go up and look at that and... Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's going to be fantastic. So I went up to the glass and I took a photograph and he was looking away. And then he just kind of glanced at me. <laughs> and I'm taking all these photos and I got it on burst. And it went... And my phone's going... And I think he could hear it. Because then all of a sudden, literally in about in a matter of a second, he was up. He turned around and he was standing on the glass, pouring at it. And... Mm. Even though there's glass there, yeah. Even though you know you're safe, the fact that like an eight foot lion turns around, roars at you, and tries to leap at your face, <laughs> still gave me the turn my jeans into brown corduroy. <laughs> I have never shat myself quite so much as to see <laughs> that thing fucking move. Seriously, you know, you think, oh, it's just a big cat oh it's just a big cat and then the thing went raw and it's like fuck here now fire everyone everyone else in the area sort of went ooh. <laughs> like, oh, i had the same sort of experience with a, a shark <laughs> in an aquarium once oh yeah I think it was a uh, the you know the one that they used to have in the or they've got in the glc building or used to have in the glc building yeah um they had this they had the, like great big glass part standing mm. there and it's quite murky far back mm. and i looked i've turned around and looked in as I, after i've looked there's this shark just mm. comes slowly out of the darkness mm. swimming towards me yeah. now i think it was something like a nurse shark or something something quite mm. low down on the vicious list yeah but even then i just f- fucking i could feel me fucking bladder loosening yeah well well like i say Stand. I was literally two inches away from the pause, and you watch that fucking go, and you, it's like, oh my giddy aunt, I, I, my my bowels loosened in in ways that were embarrassing, <laughs> frankly. I so, just... it, oh, is it is the burst set of you sort of like picture upright, you taking pictures, all of a sudden you've got it is like a flicker book. It is. It, there's six pi- there's, there's six pictures on Facebook. I put them on Facebook, and it was literally like, "What the fuck?" And it was like two seconds later. I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm actually facing a, a snarling lion." And then next thing, it's like looking at me, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm scared now. Very scared. Still scared. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be. You don't want to. You do not want to see a lion literally turn and jump at you. That's all I'm saying. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't think there's any any anything deals to say about that. Um, other than that, um, yesterday went down to Bristol. Um, down to Bristol, took me two hours, and then ironically, it takes me less time to get to Bristol, which is 170 miles away, than it does to get to my office, which is only 12 miles away. <laughs> just just sit there and figure that out figure that shit out <laughs> but um yeah that was about it really um but the only problem with that um as we soon will find is that while i did enjoy the trip down and did enjoy the trip back we had to watch mac and me <laughs>
Right, so Mac and Me. Yes, Mac and Me, part of our Sadvent calendar. Uh, part one, behind door number one. Mac and Me is a 1988 American science fiction adventure film, in quotes, co written by Steve Fake and directed by Stuart <laughs> Raphael about a mysterious alien creature, aka Mac that escapes from a nefarious NASA agent and is befriended by a boy who uses a wheelchair due to paraplegia. Together, they try to find Mac's family, whom he has been separated from. The film stars Jade Calgary, or Calgary, in his only film appearance, Christine Ebersole, Jonathan Ward, Katrina Caspery, and Lauren Stanley. The decision to create the film was based solely on the success of E.T. the Extraterrestrial, uh, some six years before, and the title comes from the working title of E.T., which was E.T. and Me. Some have considered this to be the worst film ever made, although it has become a classic. The budget was $13 million. Anybody want to take a guess at how much it made? Jim. Four. Four pounds? (laughs) Four Big Macs. Four Big Macs. (laughs) Elton. Um, I, oh, 10 million. Okay. Darren. Um, 20 chicken nuggets, <laughs> uh, three portions of large fries, and a strawberry milkshake. All to eat in. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like sauce with that? Uh, yeah. Do I have to pay for it? <laughs> so I'll, if you're going to make me pay fucking 10 pence a sachet, you can just stick it up your... Back of me. That's where you can stick it. Up up your up your emergency induction port. Um That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Um to be quite honest, I think we've all paid for this. Uh, in, <laughs> in more ways than one. Actually the box office was six point four million. Making what? it What? Yeah. The film is considered a box office bomb having grossed only six point four million with a bu- in the United States with a budget of thirteen point something million. Uh, and half the profit was shared with Ronald McDonald House Charities. Um, the, the critical... So they got a bill for six million then? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Fucking big-hearted Ronald there. <laughs> yeah. We've brought you a check. Oh, sorry, it's not a check. It's actually an invoice. <laughs> Pay up, you dying orphan <laughs> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> um, the film had a number of accolades. Um <laughs> <laughs> in the 1988 Golden Raspberry Awards where it won Worst New Star Ronald McDonald Worst Director Stuart Raphael Worst Picture Burger King <laughs> Burger King Worst Picture RJ Lewis um, who lost out to um, Tom Cruise's Cocktail um, Worst Screenplay um, which were which also lost out to Hayward Gould's um, screenplay for Cocktail. It also got um, <laughs> it was nominated for Young Artist Awards Best Family Motion Picture, which it lost out to Beetlejuice. The Best Young Actor in a Motion Picture, uh, Jake Calgary, which um, we, he lost out to Corey Haim's License to Drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. The film has gained a measure of notoriety due to a running gag of actor Paul Rudd when appearing on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Um, Rudd will often perform a bait and switch, replacing his footage with a poorly staged and melodramatic stage clip from uh, Eric going off the cliff in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than the film he's ostensibly promoting. Um, yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, listed among the 100 most amusingly bad movies ever made in the Golden Raspberry Awards um, almanac. Um, and the film ends with a free- freeze frame and the superimposed title, We'll Be Back. It was such a dismal box of his failure that the proposed sequel will never even made it to the drawing board. Coca-Cola and McDonald's back the movie, and thus numerous references to both products feature heavily. And it really? was all- Yeah, you couldn't tell, could you? <laughs> And on top of that, 
Um, you're going to love this. It's Jennifer Aniston's film debut. She was in it. Really? Yep. Was she? Yeah. Yeah. She was in Mac and Me. Was I, she drowning in the water or something? I don't know if she was playing Mac <laughs> or what. <laughs> Hold on. She Take was, that back. No. She was an uncredited dancer in McDonald's. In the McDonald's dancing scene. Ah, yes. The spontaneous dance routines. The spontaneous dance routines. Yeah. yeah. Um, the film was heavily criticised for the similarity of its plot, characters, and even the design of the alien to E.T., which came out six years before. It was further criticised for its numerous blatant product commercials and placements, including co- for Coca-Cola Skittles, the only food the alien eats, Sears, where, his boy, where the boy's mother works, and the pervasive promotion of McDonald's, and the contrivance of the character being called a mysterious alien creature, which is a.k.a. a Mac, making the dad... The father character, the Big Mac. Um, oh God! <laughs> um, yeah, this led to um, one one reviewer calling the film more a TV commercial than a movie. Um, the distinguishing feature of the protagonist using a wheelchair, without that being the focus of the story, received mixed reactions too. At Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds a 0% rating, with a consensus that says Mac and Me is duly infamous. Not only is it a pale imitation of E.T., but it's also a thinly veiled feature com- feature-length commercial for McDonald's and Coca-Cola. The f- <laughs> yeah, and that's it, really. Everything else was, sh- you know, we've gone over. So, um... Who's seen this film? Elton, you said you thought you'd seen this film. Yeah, I had seen this film. Now, I don't think any of the rest of us have. No. So, that by techni- technically, I think we'll re- reverse the roles this week, and you can go first, because you've actually seen it. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it will just be us three just ranting. <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh... When did it come out? 88? Yes. Um, I'm trying to remember what format I saw this on. Shit, covered shovel, thrown <laughs> against the window? <laughs> I The actual story, I, I remember it being very much like E.T. And I remember the, the alien in it. I don't remember anything from the movie, but I was around a friend's house watching it. And... It it wasn't just once either. Oh no! It, really? It, no. Good lord! Yeah. I I feel like I. <laughs> oh god! Um, yeah. See, it, it was a couple of times that we watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell! Yeah. Maybe that's why I'm like this now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that that could explain an awful lot. To be honest, it it, it could well do. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't want to tread on anyone's toes about this because it's, it's fucking god awful, isn't it? It's shit. Oh, uh, well, yeah, just a bit. I, I was watching it and trying to find some, some strand on which I could hang on to, to, I don't know, maybe enjoy it or maybe think of it as a, uh, it, oh, it's shit, but fun. And it's it's really not. It's fucking god awful. It really is. There's there's a bit in it where a man is covered in foam and yet still on fire. <laughs> yeah, they've literally <laughs> filled the entire car with foam, and his arm's still on fire. He's still on fire. <laughs> they they can't do anything right on this. Um, <laughs> the, Mac himself, he looks like an inside out child. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's freaky. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um. You you've yeah. already mentioned about the the Coca Cola and the McDonald's, but yeah. it the the product placement is so blatantly obvious. Mm. It's it's distracting as well. <laughs> it's very distracting because you know as soon as they plot. get a drink out, oh. It's going to be a Coca-Cola. Yep. Uh, oh, it, it's the the animatronics. Is there any? It's no. Oh, it's so, so bad. <sighs> what, did they have like a, a, a drunk man in the dad? 
dad's body just wobbling around everywhere. He clearly didn't know where he was or what he was <laughs> he doing. Couldn't see what he was doing in that no. testicle mask. And they're not cute aliens either. <laughs> it, it's not a cute story. No. It it doesn't. Oh, there's a fucking montage where the mum goes out running. What the fuck was happening there? What, what I the had to ki- turn it off at that point. Oh, the kid rolls downhill. Oh, t- t- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, well, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say what I was just thinking. Just then. just do no, it. Do it. Do no, it. No, I'm, do I'm it. backing up. I'm backing do up. Do it. Do it. Why well, live in a fucking hilly place if your kid's in a wheelchair like that? Yeah. Well, that's okay, because it's, it's a house where he can see out of every window. Yet, surprisingly, she rolls him into the only room where the windows are actually like six feet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can see out of every window. Let me put you in this cupboard. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got no problems in a, a, a person in a wheelchair or a disabled person being the lead in the film. I've got no problems in that at all. The problem I have is if the film is shit, then it's not going to work. <laughs> it's really not there's I've I've got lists and lists of fucking shit that went on in here. It's just <laughs> So have I, I wrote them all down. At what point did phone. they decide to call him Mac? Yeah. It it was in it was in the McDonald's, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't. It was when they got out of the car to go into the mine. Suddenly they just started calling him Mac. No, he was called it before then. Really? I must have blacked out. Yeah. I I think it was in McDonald's. Jim. Jim, you must you must have been taking extensive notes. <laughs> <laughs> they were, but they're all in four letter words. <laughs> Scrabble words, all you all spelling the word fuck. <laughs> Even when you didn't have an F C U and a K, you just fucking it says fuck anyway, it just says ABC. <laughs> fuck <laughs> But it just seems like a lazy it really is just a a cash cow or trying to be a cash cow from E. T. Um, yeah, we can all see that, but to the point where the brother is called Michael, and isn't the brother in ET called Michael? Yep. And he's called Eric, which is very similar to Elliot. Elliot. Mm-hmm. I, I, and then they had to get the girl, which is obviously a re- replacement for Gertie. I just fucking god awful! What the fuck were they thinking of? Money. Yeah. <laughs> Cha-ching. <laughs> exactly. And uh, Ronald McDonald, creepy bastard ever. Yeah. Oh, he was staring at someone's ass for sure. Yeah. 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 Without a doubt. There was definitely there was definitely definitely some bum stareage going on from that dirty old clown. It's um <laughs> See I with Birdemic that we've watched before, that is a pile of shit and we all agree with that. Mm. But we could get a giggle out of that. I felt that we could get a giggle out of that. This, once you get past the stupid-looking alien, it doesn't really fucking stand up. Pretty much like the alien. Oh, God. (laughs) There was one bit when he was running away from that helicopter. It looked so fucking funny. (laughs) They just put this suit on a kid and said, run that way, kid. Yeah. What? (laughs) They're just scaring him in in a direction away from a helicopter. Mm. Oh, my. Goodness. Oh, just... And then he comes in a fucking teddy bear. Oh, oh the teddy bear. The teddy bear, that was a stroke of genius. They improved the special effects 2,000% by sticking a midget in a teddy bear suit. <laughs> that wasn't Jennifer Aniston in there, was it? <laughs> Do you know what? In the teddy bear. Could have been. I, I, you know what? It wouldn't have surprised me. But um, Fuck. No, I'm, I'm getting angry. Go on to someone else. I'm okay, getting angry okay. with it now. Okay, then. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on to you, Jim. I... <laughs> let's... Go on. Well, what did I think of this film? Yeah, what did you think of this film? Well, it was cunt, bollocks, bollocks, shit, cunt, fuck, bollocks, bollocks, wank stain, cunt, bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. Looked like a testicle with a finger stuck up its ass. <laughs> bollocks, cunt, cunt, bollocks, bollocks, cunting, cunting, wank, bollocks, bollocks, fuck, cunt, cunt, bollocks, shit, fuck, cunt. <laughs> what about the titles? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is a dreadful film. I know I'm probably going to just repeat what Elton said, but it's kind of I've seen films that were made cheaper mm. and made for less money, yeah, and that were worse. Mm. However, those all actually count against Mac and me. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, this isn't a bad film. Mm. It's crass. That's the, that's my overwhelming impression. It is mm. just a crass film that is cynical and contemptuous of its audience. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what really kind of, um, you know, grated. I mean, when it started, I thought, oh, actually, this has got a higher production values than I was expecting. Mm. Um, but as it went on, it's just kind of like, oh, this is just really bad filmmaking. It, it's just, I say, crass and contemptuous and lazy. Things mm. happening for no reason. And I've been racking my brains ever since watching it. I can't actually think of a worse alien design ever. <laughs> no. I've, and, and there's some shockers out there. There are some shockers. You know, let, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, there's the terrifying um, man crawling under a rug, salt vampire in Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> there are numerous bits of soft furnishings with googly eyes that turned mm. up as aliens in Lost in Space. Mm. There's Alpha Centauri in Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. There are many bad aliens, but Mac and me, they are the fucking worst. Yep. I mean... Uh, I mean, I do not use this word lightly or facetiously. Mm. Um, and I'm not just saying this as a cheap insult, but it's kind of, did they really have to look retarded? <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> my first, my first <laughs> impression of this family on their alien home world was, mm. these fuckers deserve to be extinct. Yep. They can barely communicate. They can't walk. They can't coordinate themselves are they meant to be deformed or somehow deficient and disabled <laughs> is this some sort of parallel with the kid in the wheelchair yeah. that someone thought was a good idea some sort of <laughs> some really horrible crass subtext you know <laughs> and that expression i mean it is like a like Oh, so we'll just finger them. Woo! <laughs> and it's like, oh, Jesus. And the whistling. Oh, fuck. I just mm. wanted these fuckers to die. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm all for, you know, NASA going out there and nuking that planet just to get rid of these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, that's the thing. It's just, they're so badly designed. It's, like, it's, it's not just the execution is bad. It's just the concept. Mm. And it's kind of like, who signed off on these going, the <laughs> These guys are lovable. Yeah. No, they're not. They look just creepy and wrong. Not even a good scary way. Yeah. And just look just like really just makes you uncomfortable watching. And whoever signed off and going, yes, let's make them flesh coloured. So it looks like they're all wandering around with their bollocks out. Mm. It's like it's just really weird. Especially when they interact with other human beings. It's kind of yeah. they're like some strange I don't know, care in the community, alien streakers bimbling around in a supermarket. <laughs> it's just massively inappropriate and just wrong on so many levels and, you know, borderline mm. actually of offensive, I think. <laughs> <laughs> really. What a horrible, horrible little film. Mm, it is, yes. So, so you weren't impressed then? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was quite, I was actually surprised how bad it was. <laughs> and I, th I think it was just that kind of just the cynicism and the contempt that was mm. just visible throughout that really just kind of like, wow, it's a while since I've seen a film that has just been just such a blatant, thoughtless cash grab. <laughs> <sighs> cool. <laughs> Well then, um, let's let's just move on to you then, Darren. Um, then we'll we'll go around because I'm once I start, then I think we can all just pile in. Go on in. Uh, what did you think? Yeah, of it? Uh, I'm 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 sure there were one or two people who saw my Facebook feed last <laughs> night, giving a blow by blow account mm -hmm. of the movie. Um, I mean, just so I mean, you can you can hear me now. Obviously, I didn't die before the end of the film. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't put an ending to my uh, to my set of remarks there. Mm. But um, oh oh, what a what a what a gift, what mm -hmm. a gift this movie was. I've I've got to say, um, and thank you, Lee, for choosing it. Um, uh, yeah, 
because I realised that my life isn't so bad. <laughs> you know, I I thought I'd hit rock bottom. I thought, yep. I thought you know, I, I, I thought to myself, well, you know, career's kind of grown into a halt there. Mm. Um, uh, you know, I haven't got much money these days. And then I watched this film and it's like, fuck me, I'm, I'm actually living quite well, aren't I, <laughs> compared to this? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just, somebody put up on Facebook, they said, um, oh, it should be noted that, uh, mm. you know, of course, there was a, a young sort of like disabled gentleman Mm. which is very unusual for films and stuff. Mm. And, yeah, um, great stuff. But you want them to be in the lead on a decent movie, okay? Mm. Don't put it. Don't put a lead in, in this pile of old shit, you know? Because that's, that's not good, no. you know? That's, that's like, I don't know, um, how can I say? Uh, imagine having mm. um, sort of like, you know, e- electing... Barack mm. Obama, okay, yeah, into office, the world's first black president, just as somebody kicks off World War Three. You know, <laughs> you don't want that, <laughs> no, because that's not going to go down well, and that's going to that's going to mark his career for the rest of his natural born <laughs> existence, <laughs> however many minutes that is. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, that the bit with the wheelchair going down the fucking hill, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. What the fuck? It just, you can see boy in a wheelchair starts off going down the hill, speeding along, and then mm. all of a sudden it cuts to a Guy Fawkes dummy in a wheelchair mm. being fired from an air cannon mm. off the side of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he did that at the end of the film as well with the fucking explosion. Mm. Right? It's as if somebody had run up behind it and just pushed it. You know, and you can, if you look carefully, you could probably see their hands just coming out of a shot mm. as as the actual wheelchair rolls towards the explosion that's 40,000 miles away that, as you so kindly pointed out, was able to kill a small child, <laughs> even from that distance. <laughs> Obviously, a straight bit of shrapnel yeah. there hit him squarely in the forehead. Yeah, it was. It was like, how on earth, what on earth happened there? It was like, he 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 was literally you you could see he was so far away from the explosions he wasn't far off, much further than the um <laughs> wasn't much further than the cops but anyway yeah. I, I, there's one other bit with that scene which I spotted which I I'll, I'll bring up in a minute but go on carry on I mean it should be noted that at uh, 13 minutes and 45 seconds I already wanted to just turn this off and start watching the room. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> much classier movie. Yeah. I can I can watch the room. I know it's a bad film, mm. but I can still watch the room. I couldn't really watch this. No, you know, my concentration slid off of this fucking movie faster than a an, a a bobsledder on mm. a greasy fucking tray. Just mm. right off. <laughs> couldn't concentrate after all. I kept coming back to it. Mm. It's like it's like it's like looking at the sun. You can't do it for more than a couple of seconds. <laughs> you, you have to keep looking away and then coming back again. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely get that. I was literally, I was the same. I was, I was like sitting there, literally going, "I can only take ten minutes of this. Stop." You get less damage if you look at the sun. Exactly. That's very true, actually. Yeah. You know. Hmm. I mean, you know, with this, you come away with your retinas intact, but you really don't want that because you want, it's sort of like five minutes into it mm. and you want someone to blind you just so you don't <laughs> have to watch the rest of the film, you know? I know it's a bit extreme, but anybody who thinks that really hasn't watched this film. Yeah, that's very think, true. Yeah, I think you'd probably find what I just said quite reasonable, mm. you know? Yeah, I watched the movie. You understand. Well, I, I I can't remember who I said it to, but I was I, I after watching, I was literally sitting there going. I was literally saying, "Well, you know, this will be handy if if the train derails while I'm watching it, at 150 <laughs> miles an hour, and I'll, I'll make it before I get to the end." Yeah, you know, you know, in airplane, mm. right when Stryker mm. starts 
telling all those people his life story. Mm. And you got the one guy who sets himself alight with the petrol and stuff like that. I I, I totally sympathise with him. They mm. obviously had Mac and Me as the in-flight fucking movie on that that mm. airplane. Yeah, yeah. That's why they did it. It just pushes them over the edge. <laughs> just yeah, that's it. I've got nothing left to live for. Goodbye. No, I've got nothing. <laughs> I, I, I think for me, this mm. film goes up there with the greats like House of the Dead 2, yeah. um, Judge Dredd. Mm. <clears throat> but even then, fuck me, that made Judge Dredd look like a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, I, I couldn't actually, um, yeah, I can't actually deny that. Judge Dredd. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's uh, Sylvester Stallone's Judge Dredd makes it look like a fucking the deer hunter, you know? Makes Jar Jar Binks look like Shaft. Oh, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's that a private dick who's a massive hit with all the kinks? Shaft! <laughs> <laughs> damn right. <laughs> Misa damn right. <laughs> Misa just talking about Shaft. <laughs> Oh Christ Almighty! I didn't even do the post bit with the you know we'll be back. You didn't. No. Or or the um or the credit or the credit bit with Ronald McDonald as himself. No. No. no I just as soon as it we got to that bit, it was like ding dong, the witch is fucking dead. <laughs> Off. I've seen everything. Yeah, I've seen everything. I was Patrick Stewart. <laughs> I've seen everything. Nice. This is it. Mm-hmm. So um, it gets a thumbs up from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm off of the digitally remastered Blu-ray when it comes out. <laughs> Fuck me, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, right, okay. Um, well, for me, I I thought it was a masterwork of genius and understated um, subtlety and... No, I can't keep that going. It, it was complete and utter fucking bollocks, wasn't it, really? As as far as it goes, it, it was... It was moronic. I mean, Jim's Jim hit the nail on the head. It was crass, that for sure. But it was mm. fucking moronic as well. I mean... You know, it was like stupid shit. Like, you know when they're in like the petrol station towards the end... And the aliens are all looking out of the looking out of the car at this woman who's waiting for her car to get filled up, and they and she looks back at the girl, uh, looks back at the aliens, and they're looking at her, and it's very clear they're in, they're aliens, they're in the back of a car, and this woman yeah. looks at them, looks at them, and then they it's only when they reach through to grab the empty can that she's emptied does she scream and then cause all sorts of fuss. You know, that's 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 like a minor thing, or like, like they clearly ha- they clearly had no more money for reshoots. So when, so when <coughs> when old Elliot or whatever his name is gets blown up, when he gets blown up, you see, go back to the cops and everyone runs to to help. One of the cops who's behind one of the cars literally trips over the bonnet. Yes, <laughs> in the background, he literally falls over the falls over the car he's hiding behind, and uh, I mean, you know, things like things. The the thing I found with with the design of Mac or all of them is they all look like they were stoned out of their fucking gourd, and then you suddenly realise what they've done. They they love drinking Coca Cola. They were on a massive yep. sugar come down. The whole fucking lot of them. They were just zoned out of their fucking skulls. But the design, the design looked like, you know when you get those people who age super quickly? <gasps> yep. Yes, Peralgia, I can't yeah. pronounce it. I, I, it's a terrible disease, but they looked like, they looked like, essentially like a monkey was eating two figs and then got hit with a rapid version of that disease. <laughs> it was like, it literally looked like, it looked like like someone had just had like um like one of those sort of sex dolls, which was just a pair of testicles, and then mm. just decided to stick some eyes on it and then some ears, and then when they when they're fucking hanging around in the in the fire after after a, a highly explosive Walmart detonates, 
<laughs> I mean, let's not <laughs> for, for no reason whatsoever. For no reason whatsoever. Because let's not forget, we're not in the petrol station at this point, and we're in. A, <laughs> we are in. We are in the supermarket. The aliens basically nick everything. Fuck off out of the fuck off out of the Walmart. The police randomly shoots the ground. The aliens turn around. The, everyone goes bananas. Shoots the shit out of that Walmart, and the whole thing detonates like someone's thrown, you know, thrown TNT into a barbecue. It was just like, <laughs> and and then you see these sort of skeletal things kind of scampering around in the flames, and it was like, what on earth am I watching? What the fuck am I watching this? I mean, by the oh, hold on, I've got some notes here. Hold on, yeah. Hold on, where are we? The alien, Mac, this is before he was Mac, is a fucking psychopath, drilling through walls, chopping down doors, moving gardens inside. It's a path, It's pathological. And, even worse, it's the mum blames the least able child in the house for moving what is clearly a metric tonne of dirt and plants into a room that you <laughs> <laughs> and then deals with it by saying that she's going to go back to the bed. Even if the kid was responsible, this shows the parenting style that would cause the kid to do this. It's a cry for attention. Mum just walks in and goes, Oh, he's hacksawed through the wall. He's put two drill bits through a wall. He's cut our door down. He's moved like several thousand tons of earth into our living room. Oh, I'm just going to go to bed. <laughs> I've done this. I'm done with this. And, and then it, she thinks they repair it as well. Mm. Oh, well done for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you, I went to bed, and next thing I know, yeah, have hoovered the carpets, repaired the walls, repaired the doors. And then on top of that, that whole thing with the, the kid going off the cliff, right? <laughs> Apart from being the most patently ridiculous thing ever, is there's, there's two things, one at either end. One is, here's a wheelchair-friendly house. This is the whole point of a wheel, you know, the whole thing is wheelchair-friendly, but it's got six foot high windows. It's got, <laughs> it's it's built on a hill, and not only that, but there's no fence on the garden that's on the edge of a fucking cliff. And there's a path leading to a gate that just walks you off the end of a cliff. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, and I did this. <laughs> Who all... built this house? The anti Samaritan. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking psychopath. <laughs> It's on the house. It's on the housing market every two weeks. That's another happy customer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scroll down the bottom of the garden to end it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just going out for a cigarette. La. <laughs> anyway, but the thing was not only that, but when the kid goes off the cliff, you cut back to the alien, and the alien's just standing there with his kind of Paul McCartney with a pineapple up his ass expression on his face, <laughs> and he's just staring at the kid drowning. And he's staring at the kid drowning. And he's staring at the kid drowning. When the kid finally goes below the surface, the alien decides to put, get a bit of a wiggle on. Goes under the water, pushes the kid up just a little bit, and then hides under the water again. And the kid's going, did you see it? And the mum's looking over the cliff going, just talk to me. It's like, what? Who wrote this? It was like 12 people writing random words and just throwing them in a fucking bag and then pulling them out randomly and sticking them together. The only thing that had any cohesion whatsoever was the McDonald's dance sequence. I reckon they filmed that first. I honestly do. And then they suddenly went, well, how are we going to fit this in somewhere? We got like a McDonald's advert. Hmm. Oh, well, someone's dressed as a bear. Hmm, great. Well, how can, what, how can we get a bear in it? Well, we haven't got really got time for that. Hold on. I've got this novelty sex toy over here. Oh, great. Stick some ears on it. Jobs are good. And there's the yeah. entire film. They've probably done the dance scene first. I thought, do you know what? This is going all right. Let's blow something up and spend a lot of money on it. And yeah. they've blown something up and gone, oh, fuck. Mm. Now, now we've got to make the rest of the film. Yeah. Bollocks. I yeah. know, let's just copy E.T. Yeah. You know, what, why the hell didn't these get sued to high heaven? Mm. I mean, it was just like, I, I, it just had really stupid, nonsensical things happening. Like, like, what was the whole scene with Mac in a car going downhill with dogs? What was that I'd... actually about? 
<laughs> Worst neighbourhood for dog owners ever. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like rabid wolf Come outbreak. to Irresponsible Hills, sponsored by Marley and Meal. Let your pet run into traffic any time it fucking likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course you've got a, a little kid's toy car that does like 40 miles an hour downhill. I mean, and not only that, then he spends all his time up, up in the tree. And it's like, at no point, you got like, you know, sort of fucking cut rate, blue and white striped Glenn, Glenn, was it, Glenn Campbell singing in the background, if only you need a friend. It's like, while this thing that looks like someone's half chewed a whelk and stuck some googly eyes on it, sits up a tree with its one movable th- position of moving its head like two degrees left and right while a bunch of very bored dogs sit at the bottom of a tree. And the kid rolls downhill chasing his mum doing jogging. What was that all about? I mean, even in the context of the story, what was that about? <laughs> just, just, this film... Was <laughs> just complete and utter shit from start to finish, even down to the fucking. Where did that probe come from? Where did it go? What planet was that? What or planet? moon was that? I I don't I don't. What and, and I gave up after that part already. <laughs> and that's like two minutes in. Yeah. And what was the big deal? What was the big deal with the aliens touching electrical stuff and having it all detonate? Well. That's what I was thinking about the moon. You know, mm. clearly, either they've been banished into the wasteland mm. because they keep fucking things up, or they had a civilization and they killed everyone by accident. Yeah. Yeah. I suddenly got the feeling, I suddenly got the feeling that actually what might have actually happened is that the NASA probe landed by like a hillbilly trailer park on that planet. And all the greatest minds were actually just over the hill in a city, but you basically got the family of window lickers who were trying to <laughs> who were trying to trying to mine for Coca Cola using straws in the desert. <laughs> you know who you know literally alien nature's pandas. You know they 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 are biologically programmed to basically fuck off and die, and. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is just over the hill going, hmm, yes, more Grey Poupon, everyone. Hmm, yes, I've just worked out light speed. Hmm, fantastic. How, and, 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 oh, who knew this was the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Meanwhile, over the fence is a bunch of dicks going, oh, I think I can eat this rock. Hmm, come here, baby. You know, and, ooh, maybe we communicate by whistling. And the other thing is, those fuckers, those fuckers sitting in a desert on an alien planet that clearly had no moisture whatsoever except for one tiny little squirt of something that came out of the water, that came out of the ground. Apparently, they can't last or can't last three days in the desert on Earth. I mean, really? Apart from yeah, they fucking went in a cave and died. Until you give them Coca Cola, in which case then they're up and running. They're like fucking Johnny Mathis, too many sugars in his tea. <laughs> <laughs> they're fucking off on one. <laughs> it's just appalling. It is just an appalling, appalling film. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> just what well, well, I want to know at the end. Yeah. When someone says, let's put clothes on them. Yeah. Was it just me, or did they look like the Kennedys? <laughs> and when they pulled off in the car, I was just shouting, back into the left, back into the left, come on now, come on, back into the left. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, just uh, you know, this, this alien race that can't communicate, can't understand anything, don't get any idea of what you're talking about don't understand how guns work don't understand how anything works five minutes later they're pledging allegiance to the flag wearing costumes and owning a pink Cadillac why? how? it's just fuck off there's just no thought into that whatsoever is there? no thought into that yeah I mean I I think the thought went as far as Let's make a film about McDonald's. How are we going to get around that? Um, 
have something called Mac. Yay! Jobs are good and coke and hookers for everyone. See, there were some shots that could have been or could have worked. Mm. Mm. Where you've got the three, uh, the 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 mum, the sister, and and the dad in the desert with the hands held up in the air. As much as we think that holding your hands up and whistling is a stupid way of communicating, it's their way of communicating. And so, when you've got them silhouetted and then the sun, mm. you've got the the groundwork for quite a nice shot there and yet it's still not carried off as well as it could have been i'm i'm not saying it is a good shot it's it's got potential and they they could have storyboarded that and gone oh do you know what this will look quite nice and worked on it maybe but they, they didn't seem to want to work on it it was more rushing between this point and that point and they were talking about straws at one point and then that turns into windmills how do you get a fucking windmill from a straw? I don't fucking understand that. <laughs> I, I, you're... I was quite surprised to see a field of windmills as well. That was quite cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 the only thing. It's the only thing that was even remotely responsible in that film. Yeah, I quite like the camper van though. That was quite cool. But then by the end of the movie, I was sick of seeing that as well. <laughs> you like the camper van? Yeah. I think that says a lot, really, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I think I think that really kind of sums it all up. If you're sitting here going, right, camper van. It's the only thing that caught my attention. So, are we all just done with this film? I mean, really? I mean, I'm... oh god, yeah. <laughs> Was there anything good in it at all? The credits at the end. <laughs> Just because they exist, and that means that the film is, in film sense, um, it, it's mortal like Bruce Forsyth. It can it be will killed. eventually. It does eventually die. It will eventually die. Yeah. Okay. Jim? Um, mm. No, there was nothing good in it at all. It was disjointed. A waste of everyone's time and money. <laughs> Elton? Ah, oh, it's an abortion of a movie, really, isn't it? Yep. It's, uh, it's I, you know, there's there's bits where the brother Michael was putting his sunglasses on and then taking them off, and he thought he could see Mac mm. around the corner, mm. and there could there could be from an, an eighties plus a eight to ten year old point of view before the internet and shit like that. Mm. there is a, a sort of creepy vibe to that little alien popping his head round the corner. Yep. But it's, they, they don't want to go for the creepy. They want to go for the cute. And it's really hard to find something that you, it looks like you've trodden in cute. Yeah. When it looks like, when it looks like basically a, a, a mad, a mad scientist has tried to make cock and balls and a vagina roll into one and give it arms and legs you can't really feel too much in the way of sort of empathy for something that looks like that really mm. and and when it all it does is go <laughs> and then have big stretchy arms and the, oh, when it gets run over at the very beginning I was like yay <laughs> quick lovely and how 10 minute the, movie brilliant how the fuck how the fuck does it do any of them escape from NASA I mean, let, just ignoring for a fact that NASA would probably be one of the most highly, totally 110% fucking secure areas in the area, it's like, wouldn't, wouldn't they, what's the whole, don't let them go, you know, don't let them get away. Well, I, I have it on good authority that the security on the base, or most of the security on the base, was actually mm. off on a training course on what to do should they find aliens invading the base. Mm. So um, there you go. That's why they were so, you know, they Shit. escaped so easily. It's a bit like me missing a bus because I was looking at a bus tracker. <laughs> a and that did actually that, happen. There? <laughs> there yeah. is truth in that, yes. There is truth in that, yeah. As I looked up, they, they, they all saw the face of a sad man 
on the side of the road as he watched the bus go past. <laughs> Just slowly pull away. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's here. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. now it's there. <laughs> yep. Oh, well. So, from this complete lack of enthusiasm on all of us, should we just wrap it up here? Cause yeah, let's just wrap it up. I think it's tedious. Really, really tedious film. It's not even a film where you can get angry at it. Because it's, no. it's just so bland and dull and lifeless and cynical and pointless and fucking... It's tedious in every way. It's inept in pretty much every conceivable way. The music is fucking awful. Alan Silvestri was clearly watching Back to the Future while scoring that film. Because there were moments when fucking aliens are just walking across a car park and the music's going... You think, you're not even watching this film. Alan there, was, there was a lot of that, though, wasn't there? Yeah. I can't say I blame him. Well, and no. I think he just... He started looking at the movie and he said, hey, have some offcuts. <laughs> Here's some <laughs> shit I've got lying around. Yeah. Yeah, don't... Yeah, just don't... Don't bother me. Just just, just take it away. Here's some stuff left. Here's Can we put st- this in a Hessian sack with a brick? What, this film? Yeah. Throw it in the canal. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure the world has consigned this to a Hessian sack because, I mean, we really did have to go through the ringer just to fucking do this film, didn't we? I wish I'd been wearing a Hessian sack over my head while this had been playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An elephant, elephant man style mask. <laughs> yeah. Just one eye hole, just so you take half sanity damage from watching it. Yeah. <laughs> You've all been very kind. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Well, um, that's about it, really, isn't it? We've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck this shit show. Fuck it. <laughs> we, made, we made a terrible, terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> we were so wrong. We thought this would be funny, but it's not. Just sad. <laughs> Just sad, sad, sad. It just points the finger inward. Yeah. And up its own butt <laughs> till it looks like Mac going, ooh. With his arthritic fingers. Fucking 600-year-old Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did look a little bit like Jimmy Somerville as well. There you go. Yeah. It was the fact he kept changing scale that bugged me. <laughs> oh, like, you that... can't even get that right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's um, yeah. Well, that I mean, it was things like the pl- the helicopter landing. Uh, uh, no, yeah, the the no, not the helicopter landing. The, them pulling up in the bus outside the mine, and then saying to Eric, "Come on, Eric," and it's like Eric's on a wheelchair, and you're going down some rails. Isn't that going to be, like, really fucking difficult? Yeah, they, they cut the f- uh, film just before Eric went, shut the fuck up. How yeah. the fuck am I supposed to get down there? Yeah. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> he went, oh, don't talk like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, tedious film. Okay, let's do feedback. Now put your hands up, here online, doing real fine, we're doing our podcast thing. It's called Black Dog, it's not like a job, is anyone there listening? What do you think of our show? Let us know by MP3 or email. Just get it to us, it ain't no fuss, we'll even read your Twitter rings. Cause if you like us or you hate us, it's a feedback in. God, a geek reports and rates and puts a feedback in. Need to think my voice is sexy, puts a feedback in. Man, we really like it if you put some feedback in. Oh, 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 Right, okay, feedback time. 
Let's see if the uh, feedback is going to be more enthusiastic about this than we were. And we start with Happy Dave Renane, a man over in New Zealand, and he writes the title Mac and Cheese. Mac and Cheese. So much, so much cheese. Hello, chaps. First, a bit of housekeeping. I watched this on a PC. Is that okay? Yes, it is. Secondly, Mac and Me must be the most misjudged piece of McDonald's marketing since they hired that creepy clown to say he likes nothing more than anemic meat wedged between two small soft buns. And while, we, and while your caregivers are out of the room, would you like some sedatives? Actually, that's a bloody good point. That fucking doctor. Go on, tell you can tell me anything you like, son. Your parents aren't here. And I'll, now you've told me, here's a pill. It's like, what? Nice. Wow. Right. Why do these aliens seem to be getting vacuumed up all the time? It's because this film just sucks. It even rips off the once greatest science fiction movie of all time. Anyone who puts on sunglasses seems to glimpse some al- ugly alien fucktard intent on messing with their minds and dressed in suits to walk amongst us. John Carpenter should sue. From the wheelchair safe house with a cliff at the end of the garden. Luckily, that alien from an arid planet could swim so well. <laughs> Actually, that's a very good point. To jogging down the centre of the street and gurning alien effects like a novelty dildo in a Warner Brothers cartoon. Everything just screams wrong. In the end, the only way I could watch this was to try and distance myself and trying to spot how they could have made it better. And here's the things that would have worked. It had elements of a good B-grade horror movie for kids. Mysterious alien coming back with a space probe terrorising a house with rogue power tools. Uh, creepy animated teddy bears and ho- with holes in their asses, And affecting people with St. Victus dance. Uh, oh, St. Victus dance. Oh, St. Vitus dance, sorry. Before using demonic powers to bring child back from the dead with 80s backdrop. On paper, you could twist it around and even get a Stranger Things thing vibe going in execution. Fuck me. No, 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 Robert, Ronald. It's a figure of speech. But the problem is, and don't I believe I'm saying this as I pull down my season pass to the bunker, I cannot completely condemn this film. Don't get me wrong. It's awful. Truly, offensively awful. I can feel brain cells dying just watching the thing. But what you can expect? What can you expect from a poorly put together, cynical commercial piece of eighty eighties advertising tat? Honestly, I'm more offended, but by the million dollar splurge, I'm more offend. Honestly, I'm more offended, but million dollar splurge exercises, where they spunk CGI or, or CGI on famous actors or franchises across the sp- screen and expect us to check our brains at the door and lap it up for God knows what reasons. We've done way worse on the Black Dog, Hudson Hawk, Prometheus, Avatar, Avengers, Steed and Peel. I'm looking at all of you. Complaining about Mac and Me is a bit like bitching that your Happy Meal isn't a Lego Millennium Falcon. I'm not angry at this movie, just very jaded and disappointed in humanity in general. Happy? Question mark. Dave. P.S. I don't mind the Nas. I didn't mind the NASA space probe model, though. I look forward to seeing it on Space Dock Jury, where it might be given the button moon rocket a money run for its money, except possibly in crew competence. Thank you very much for that, sir, and thank you for the uh, sidelong plug for Space Dock as well. Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't think you can improve it by trying to do anything like that. I mean, <laughs> I was trying to think what other films in 1990, 1988 had... 13 million dollars and I I thought I'd look up hold on aliens I think aliens only uh, aliens movie that came out in 1986 two years before and that had a budget of he says trying to very smoothly click on the links do 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 yeah that had a budget of 18 million right so for 5 million more you get a much better film, apparently. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, get a film. Not, you get a film. A, a cohesive film. But anyway... Um, that's not $5 million difference there, is it? Not really. Crying out loud. It's light years. Light years of difference. Well, exactly. That's the thing. It's like, you know, I, you know, technology moves on. So technology moved on two years. The budget came down... 
by $5 million, and yet somehow we got something that looks a thousand times worse than, I don't know, a fucking McDonald's advert. Well, actually, it's a McDonald's advert. What am I talking about? God, I'm losing my mind and my will to live. Thank you very much for this, Happy Dave. Stay happy. That's all I can say. Jim. Yes. <laughs> Over to you, sir. <clears throat> well, next we have Keldor the Mighty. Ah. Yay. Doreen Kelly. <laughs> and she writes, subject line, Simon says, never again. <laughs> okay. I have a feeling I know where this one's headed. <laughs> I was going to say, we could just skip to the end. <laughs> Dear good ship, black dog shipmates, and good evening to the command crew. I managed to see this film this week, and while I will not confirm or deny how I did, I would like to thank Mr. Chris Johnson, keeper of our copies of the Macland Historical Documents, for his assistance in this matter. I chose that my seven or nine pounds to go to a charity that helps the world's most vulnerable people rather than the coffers of a McDonald's. Mm Mm-hmm. I think the best thing we could do with this film is declare Mac the shittiest extraterrestrial superhero. Yep. <laughs> and rate his skills on the roast potato scale. <laughs> Sneaking around, four roast potatoes. Mm-hmm. Hiding from grown-ups, three roast potatoes. Mm-hmm. Wheelchair pussy, four roast potatoes. <laughs> DIY, five roast potatoes. Common sense while doing DIY, minus 50 roast potatoes. Yep. Dancing, one roast potato. Bonding with kids, four roast potatoes. Brownie mm. slash borrower type activities, minus 10 roast potatoes, given he created the need for such nocturnal activities. <laughs> Pet like skills, minus 20 roast potatoes. Driving, minus 20. <laughs> sorry, minus 100 roast potatoes. Bloody hell. <laughs> Tree climbing, five roast potatoes. No wonder Eric needed a light sedative, given the number of cans of cola he drinks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and how daft is Michael? Just keep him dancing and they'll think he's a teddy. Since when do teddies dance? <laughs> as good as that. <laughs> Off free ranging like that. Ramps attached to a battery pack base. <laughs> Could this rip off E.T. anymore? Is Mac a Ferengi? He keeps doing the Ferengi pleading hands gesture. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I will not have a McDonald's. Brain, remember that magic eye post from this SCIF campaign a few years ago? <laughs> Bye for now. Keldor the Mighty, self made defender against fast food aliens. Mm. P.S. By the way, Debenhams, I will not be buying anything from your gift week either, despite your frequent interfilm advertising. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Keldor. Um, yeah. I just, I, we're sorry. We're sorry. We are so so sorry. Like I say, I, I I was hoping to have the um the clip from Prometheus where she goes, "We were wrong. We were so wrong." Because <laughs> I think that just about sums it up. Really, mm. I just we we've made such a bad mistake, such a terrible terrible mistake. And the problem is we can't do anything now because if we mess everyone about oh god they'll kill us again again yeah we will we will <laughs> bags of flaming shit will be on my desk and will be, <laughs> be on my doorstep before you know it oh well thank you anyway Keldor um yeah I won't say I'm glad you liked it because you didn't um so yeah let's let's move on let's move on um to to you Elton who do you have next Right. In front of me, yep. I have Cole the Bastard Hurley. <laughs> okay, yes. And ah, I, feather I, weather. I, yeah, I suggest you listen to this very carefully. Okay. Because I've just skim read it, and it might be a zoop okay. type action. Uh, also, just before I get on to his feedback as well, is it any coincidence that we watched Mac and Me this week, and yet the creator of the Big Mac died this week as well? I think his shame is complete. There's some sort of full circle there, isn't there? Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think, I think at this point, you know, I think, I think he knew. I think he had a, 
kind of hint that something was coming. He could feel it rumbling in yeah. his soul. That's it. He just knew. He just knew at some point he would be discovered. And... They're bringing out the Mac and Me video. Oh no! Yes. What? What am I going to? <gasps> yeah. Exactly. The shock. He he died. I mean, it's you know the whole of 2016 is replete with people who were being accused of doing terrible, terrible things and then conveniently dying before they got brought to justice. <laughs> so, um, you know. <laughs> Quite handy that dying thing sometimes, isn't it? It is. Gets you out of all sorts of things. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, anyway. I'll get on to Cole. He says, uh, "Dear Black Doggers, okay, Mac and me. After my initial declaration of not wanting to revisit this movie, Lee decided to call me out and say that I was a fair weather fan. Mm-hmm, Let it be known that I am no such type of person. I have suffered through twenty-five minutes and thirty-five seconds of Mac and me." And this is roughly 76 hours longer than I should have put into it. (laughs) This movie is bad. Really, really, Mm. really fucking bad. Mm. Holy shit. Okay, the acting. The acting is stiffer than a fucking board. Yep. And it goes for everyone no matter what. I haven't seen anything this bad since Birdemic. uh, Speaking of Birdemic... Let's talk about the special effects in this movie. Special, certainly, is one of the words, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Fucking good God. There was absolutely no budget, was there? No. Wow. Well, Cole. Yeah. Thir- $13 million is pretty hefty budget, I'd say. Yeah, I'd say. Anyway, he continues. Just wow. I'm glad I bailed early. Honestly. What? Hang on. He bailed. See, see, I understand. <clears throat> Bailing early. It's, I, I, I don't know. How, how do we feel about this? He, he bailed 25 minutes into this. Um, he's, he's had a fair dose of it by that point already, though. We do know that. Yeah. But. He's bailed. Um, so I'm not going to read any more. Well, really? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not in... well, See, because okay. he has actually watched it. He 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 pulled the ripcord on it. Yeah. So in that respect, it's just a judgment call. So I, I don't... What do you think, Jim? Well it's, well, it's 99 minutes in all, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We should re- only read the corresponding percentage of fees feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. I've got this last paragraph. Sorry, I'll, I'll Go on, do read this it. last Go on, paragraph. Go on, do it. Go on. Um, okay. Just wow. I, I, I'm glad I bailed early, honestly. I didn't want to suffer through this thing any more than absolutely had to for the show. Because, wow, I really hope that it, at least next week's movie is going to be at least entertaining, uh, entertainingly incompetent and not just flat out incompetent. Take care, guys. Cole. P.S. You're ready for the gut shot here. Go eh? on. Yeah. P.S. This movie's six years older than me. So there. <sighs> We can always change your name from Cole the Bastard to... Fetus. Cole the Utter Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The... Yeah. The Cole, Cole the Relentlessly Young. I don't know. Um. Uh, okay, well, thank I you. I can't me. blame him for bailing. No, I can't. I mean, that's that's that was my next question. Can can you really bother? Can you really be? If you knew what this was going to be like, if you knew what this film was actually going to be like, would you have really seen it all the way through? I mean, I know we kind of have to, but the problem with this, I, I'd have given up after half an hour. Yeah, it obviously wasn't going to get any better. No, that is very true. I mean, that's that is part of the problem, isn't it? It's just like. We we've kind of got into it. We we've got we've got to see it through. But I I don't think any of us have actually ever bailed on the film. 
I had got 45 minutes into this. I think that's up until the mum uh, going jogging mm. with Eric. And at that point, I was worn out. I really was and had to, to pause it for a, a little while. Yeah. And then ended up watching the rest of it recently. So <laughs> it, it wasn't a, a one sit wonder for me. No, I think bonus points should be given to anyone who actually makes it through in one sitting. Because I, because I, I did, you did. Fucking yeah, yeah. hell, Jim! Fucking hell. Well, you're getting a guard of honor next, yeah. Jindig. Yeah. I was going to say, how are you? How are you even still talking to us? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Mm. <laughs> Hands up in the air, though. Cup in them. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. think it did have an effect on me, though. Um, mm. A couple of days later, I did listen to um, now playing podcast, doing a David Lynch retrospective, mm. and um, this week it was June. And oh, I actually right. ruined that podcast for myself by repeatedly shouting out, I am quack quack Satan, all the way through it. So <laughs> maybe a screw or two did come loose. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go back to the podcast where we were doing doing it because uh, quack quack Satan was very good. <laughs> oh, that, that's very good, actually. I'm I'm glad you reminded me of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... um, Well... Oh. I must admit, I, I watched it. I, I was going down to Bristol, and the train took an hour. And because I kept stopping it every like ten to fifteen minutes, because I'd watch it and it was just like, oh, I can't watch any more of this. And I'd stop and I'd make a little note of what I'd seen so far, and then sort of, then the like the signal would go and I couldn't get on Facebook, so it'd be like, okay, right, fine, I'm gonna watch a bit more. And then it was like, okay, and then it'll be like, okay, I've watched a bit more, and I stopped. And basically, it took a four-hour round trip to watch 90 minutes. <laughs> that's, that's essentially it. <laughs> well, there's other better things to do, like looking at other people's newspapers and looking out the window. Yeah. Going to Save the toilet. The- Aroma of piss coming from said toilet. Yes. <laughs> exactly. It's just trying uh, to watch for the man who's gonna go in there and stuff loads of bog roll down and block it up. Yeah, then flush it repeatedly until the water is mm. pouring down the um alleyways between the seats. Trying mm. to work out who opened the egg sandwiches. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Who has decided to eat who's decided to eat fucking shrimp <laughs> on this train? <laughs> Why? Why are you eating a curry on this train right now? <laughs> on this sealed windows <laughs> fucking train. Oh god, look at that. We can't even, can't even get oh just uh. Well, thank you very much for that, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should have music playing underneath just to kind of cover up the dead air where we kind of <sighs> Just decompress. It's just exhaling, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's just like, oh, God. Right, okay, so let's move on. My next piece of feedback, he's going to get called out because people are going to go, Oi, hold on, he said on Facebook he couldn't make it. But he did, and I let him. Because, basically, I saw all this feedback coming in. This is the confession. I saw all this feedback coming in, and I was like, right, shut the doors, because I knew... Those people who don't go on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash the Black Top Podcast, those people will send feedback in. So I have to kind of stop it a little early on the Facebook group. And so I did that. And then poor old Dr. Scum, Fred Lubno, was like, I was just about to send it. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? You know what? I think you've suffered enough. I shall let you send it in, but you know, and you know, as it turned out, no one else sent any more feedback in. So we got got all the MP3s after this. Um, after sorry, after one Jim's read. Um, so Fred, Doctor Scum Lubno writes the following: Eric, what's that in your lap? Hello, Black Dog Crew. Hope all is well. I can't remember who said it, but I've he- but I have heard. The only movies worth seeing those are rated five stars or those that are rated one star. Makami is definitely in the latter category and is probably less than a one. 
A blatant rip-off of E.T., shameless commercials for McDonald's, Coke and Skittles, the movie is so absolutely ludicrous that I did actually find myself laughing out loud a couple of times, as well as experiencing a several what-the-fuck moments. Firstly, the aliens are a terrible hybrid of a Muppet, a mime on acid, and they walk like sentient body-sized condoms filled with chocolate pudding. Their language sounded like a cross between R2-D2 and Harpo Marx. Is that the only reason why their mouths are shaped like that? Hmm. Anyway, it appeared they lived on the moon of Saturn, which is surprisingly looked like Arizona, science and knowledge be damned, <laughs> where they suck water out of the ground, hence the shape of their mouths. Actually, we recently discovered strong evidence for a subsurface ocean under Enceladus, one of the moons of Saturn. Of course, that moon is completely covered by ice and has noontime surface temperatures of minus 198 Celsius. Again, science be damned. Also, the Earth probe it land, that, land, that landed on it looked like one of the Viking spacecraft that landed on Mars in 1970. If Mac and Me was made in the 1980s, the movie actually used old technology to land on one of the moons of Saturn. What the fuck? No one could even dream up a new futuristic probe with a simpler design. How did the probe even suck up these bloated condom aliens? Further into the movie, there were a number of instances of, and this is going to sound a little strange, comedic child endangerment. <laughs> a kid in a wheelchair falls off a cliff and flies into traffic. What about the little girl in the vacuum cleaner strapped to her back flying up a wall? Classic. Crazy stuff like that made me briefly burst out with laughter. Also, I could not help but cheer when the store blew up with the alien family in it, only to be disappointed when I see them walk safely out of the fire. Also, great job kids at getting the aliens addicted to coke and skittles. We will turn the whole species diabetic in no time at all. But one, the one true what-the-fuck moment was the weird dance party in McDonald's video scene. That just was simply strange. Never before have I been so rooting for the bad government guys. They should have rounded up everyone and thrown them all in jail simply for bad taste. And the crowning what-the-fuck moment was at the end. Becoming a US citizen with a bad set of clothes from the 1950s? How and how did Dad learn how to drive? And where did he get that pink Cadillac? While this is... While this is a complete train wreck clusterfuck of a bad 1980s movie, I would highly recommend it for one-time viewing for people who appreciate bad cinema, and that's one-time viewing. Thank you, Black Dog, and I'm not sure what, whether or not I'm looking forward to the next week's movie. Yours sincerely, Fred, Dr. Scum, Love Now. Thank you very much that, sir. Good feedback. No, you're not looking forward to next week's film. And frankly, I'm thinking we've made a terrible, terrible error, and neither am I. <laughs> but anyway, so um Jim over yes. to you sir. <clears throat> Cuz at the moment Next. I, I don't think we've got much to add to these things, have we really? They're just like Not so, really. No. <laughs> I'm just waiting for that one lone voice who's going to say I oh, quite liked it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I suspect I will wait in vain. <sighs> I don't think you should hold your breath this that way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyhow, <laughs> We have more of a scientific compliment in the form of Mr. Gary Madden. Ah, uh, Mr. Spock. Uh, he writes, subject line, On the first day of shitmas, Lee Bedcalf gave to me shit. <laughs> yes. Pleasant Not sure where he's going with this one. It's no. a mystery to me. <laughs> this might be the positive one. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. You can, you can hope. <laughs> Anyhow, Gary writes... Greetings, various and sundry black doggerel, and Mr. Owl. Nice. Nothing gets the blood going like a little controversy, so here's go. I don't think Mac and Me is truly the worst movie ever. Stow the pitchforks and mm. allow me to do a bit of explaining before you start preparing the padded guest room in the bunker of Shun. <laughs> yeah. Not much of a threat, considering the current political climate here in the US. <laughs> I'm not defending Mac and me. Without a doubt, it's top to bottom awful. But when you give it a think, is it really that much worse than some of the other old tat we've watched? Is the acting that much worse than what we see in Troll 2 or Birdemic? The effects mm -hmm. are horrible. But are they any worse than Green Lantern's green animated suit? Or the Rastafarian Spooju effects that was Parallax? Oh, God. The, 
The product placement is leaden and awkward, but it isn't worse than Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, practically turning to the camera and stating that the Fantastic Formobile has a Hemi. Oh. <laughs> or the appearance of Reese's Pieces in E.T., the carbon from which Mac and me is copied. Oh, A.O. Will's actually titling You've Got Mail. I don't think so. To be honest, I think the most egregious thing about Mac and me is the creature design. I can't help thinking that the influence of McDonald's led, the decision, led to the decision that the mysterious alien creatures couldn't be too scary. I can't fathom why they decided to go for something that looks like a cross between a novelty shop rubber chicken and your granddad's scrotum. <laughs> I don't even want to think about the Happy Meal possibilities. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I look forward in trepidation to the opening of the next window in this calendar of shit. I mean, joy. <laughs> Live right. long, and if you encounter an alien hiding in your vacuum, just shoot the fucker. Yes. <laughs> Gary, Mr. Spock, man. Thank you very much for that, Gary. <laughs> Good, yeah. good feedback, sir. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Your granddad's scrotum. I think that's about right. <laughs> well, not your granddad. I don't know. I haven't seen my granddad's either, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's there's no answer to that. It's going to work out well, is there? Really thinking about no, it? We'll, we'll move shifty on. We'll just, we'll just assume that he's painting a picture, a, a theoretical picture. But, um, it was um, mentioned about the acting from this compared to Troll 2. Mm. And the only positive from that statement is the acting in Mac and Me, I felt, was slightly better than Troll 2. The thing with... I mean, I mean, I get Gary's point. I mean, it's like... You've got to say, you know, Troll 2 was fucking awful and Bird Demic was just terrible. I mean, those are awful awful films but in the both in the case of both of those in the case of both of those i mean like troll 2 had a budget you know in in 2000 you know in, in was it 90 something you know of 20 of 200,000 dollars and in the case of birdemic it was 10,000 mm. dollars i mean you're talking about literally peanuts i mean the 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 problem uh, the one time it's, uh, you know, Gary's point really starts to take hold is that when you start saying things like, you know, Green Lantern, we, you know, where hundreds of thousands of, if not millions of dollars are being thrown at, at something and producing something that's shit. But, you know, a Mac and me had two of the biggest corporations in America basically funding it. And, <laughs> you know, this is what they produced. And this is what they produced. I mean, you know, if you if you had a film made by Apple today, there should be absolutely zero reason for it to be poorly made. You know, because you know what they make three billion dollars every was it every six months or something stupid like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, they've got a bit of magic. It, it might come in like a case on the D when it's released on disc. You can't actually open it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on current form. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It may only work in a certain cinema, in which with white <laughs> walls. But the thing is, you you would you would expect that the result would be something that was competent and well shot and well filmed because they've got the money to throw at it. Where and that's the that's the big problem here. Mac and Me is a film that is utterly, utterly incompetent despite having everything going for it. And, you know, the comparison to Green Lantern is fine. Comparing it to Troll 2 and Birdemic, it's kind of a bit unfair on them, or the room, because those films fail because there's people with ambition, yet not the skill or the money to basically back them up. You know, it's like if, if I suddenly went out and said, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to compose a, a compose a symphony. Can you do it? Nope. Have you got enough money for an orchestra? I've got 10p and a button. And then suddenly, sure enough, the music sounds like a Bon Tempe organ going... Bah, bah, eh, eh. You know, that's understandable. But then if you suddenly go, I don't know, David Arnold, like $200 million and say, go and compose something, and he comes back and it goes... Ah, ah, eh, eh. You'd be like, actually, that's worse. Yeah. <laughs> and... 
I think that's the that's the thing here. I mean, he's he's right though. I mean, we have watched worse, but you know, Street Fighter, for example, is one that leaps to mind. But but in the case of things like Street Fighter, you there are there's there's stuff you can find to laugh at or you know enjoy on a sort of purely sort of guilty pleasure level. Like I I love Raul Julia's scenery chewing in that film. I think it it makes the film watchable. But when it comes to something like this, it's just like no, this is just incompetence 101 and unf- and unfathomably bad. You know, and you know Green Lantern's probably the better better comparison. It's like yeah, there's there's a film with all of Warner Brothers, you know, cash and might and a big name star and you know CGI up the wazoo, and what did it produce? Well, um, S- S- Peter Starsgard turning into a uh, CGI yellow turd. Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> Fantastic. And Mark Strong being the only Cockney member of the Sinistro Corps that you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Now it's time for me to take out the trash. You know, it's like, what the fuck am I, what am I watching here? Anyway, thank you very much for that, Gary. Good feedback, sir. And uh, now it's time to move on to our MP3 feedback and hear the lovely lilting voices of our listeners as they tell us all how much they love this film. And we shall start with Gary's um, Gary's uh, brother, Greg Bones Madden, down in the uh, medical bay of the Black USS Black Dog, and let's hear what he thinks of Mac and me. Greetings, Darren, Lee, Jim, Elton. This is Greg Bones Madden, here to give you my feedback on Mac and Me. Now, I had the pleasure of not ever seeing this show before this week, and sadly, I have to say, it's terrible. This movie's completely garbage. Um, But I know by now that everybody's already covered the poor special effects, the lousy story, bad acting, overloading uh, product placement, and I could go on from now. But I thought I'd try something a little different here and find positive points in this movie. Now, I had to look really hard. The only thing I could really find was that they did employ an actual handicapped uh, actor for the the child in the wheelchair. Uh, I thought that was a good thing. Um, I do know that uh, he did go on and play in a TV series for quite some time, um, but other than that, um, I really couldn't find much to uh, say good about this show. Um, the aliens were sea monkeys on crack. If you watch closely in the beginning scene, you could see one of them snorting a line right there before the show got started. There's no way uh, they could have survived on a probe that I assume was sent uh, to Mar- uh, Saturn, not Mars, excuse me, uh, and... Uh, return because that would take several years and with no food or atmosphere uh they would be dead and that would have been a much better movie anyways um th- this show i i tried to find excuses of why the special effects were so bad but looking back at 1988 when this film was released you also had movies like uh beetlejuice and child's play who had similar budgets as, as this movie and produced a much better product of special effects than um, this show did. Um, I think that um, it also says something that um, if you look at Beetlejuice, I think they had about $2 million more in budget than Mac and Me, and they also had bigger names in it than this show, so there was no excuse for being skinny on the budget, not going the extra mile. Uh, It was really just a sloppy child show. Uh, it shows very much. I think there was TV shows that had better special effects and better storylines than this. Actually, I could see this as a made-for-TV movie. But don't have anything extra or special to say. I thought the movie was terrible. I guess I got to learn to watch what I ask for because I did mention that it was hard to give you feedback on a good movie uh, or a movie you like. And boy, did I ask for it. Um well, until next time, uh, this is Greg Bones Madden signing off from the medical bays of USS Black Dog. Or is that HMS Black Dog? Uh, your choice, but um, cheers. Ta-ta. Right, well, thank you very much for that, Greg. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, you can't re- you can try and and find positives. I mean, the one thing I was going to say was it's kind of interesting and this might make me a horrible horrible person, but the child who played um the Elliot uh, character, the Eric character in the chair. It's it is you know a totally thumbs up thing that they got uh, someone with you know paraplegia to actually play someone who is a paraplegic and you know totally thumbs up for them it's probably the the only thing they got right the one thing that it does do though is it shoots it shoots the presumed the presumed uh, all singing all dancing happy ending it shoots it right in the foot which is Basically, you've got these four aliens who can survive explosions and what have you, and they see the kid selflessly trying to stop them from getting into trouble, and the kid dies, and so they come back up, and they use their magic powers to bring him back from the dead, but not fix his legs. When you... Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like, hey, kid, we can actually we can actually resurrect you. We can bring you back from the other side. We can reinvigorate your cells in every way. We can put a land vital back into you and give you life. But you know what? Legs is a little bit difficult, so we'll leave that. And I I don't know why, but I got a sense that were the the kid in the, the wheelchair actually just a straightforward actor without any disabilities i would have laid money that the end scene would have had him getting up and doing a dance at mcdonald's oh jesus come on tell me i'm wrong no you're probably right there yeah <laughs> yeah it just seemed to be pointing that way they have made such a big deal about the house being sort of like wheelchair friendly yet being set on a hill well, you know, um, being wheelchair friendly, and he can look out of windows despite the windows being six feet up in the air, and <laughs> you know all these other things. And they kept making the thing out of the fact that he's got this wheelchair. And then I thought, well, then the answer is he's going to get out of the wheelchair at the very end for the happy ending, you know, with this magic powered alien. But actually, no, the aliens were like, no, nah, fuck that, you can stay in the chair, mate. So. um I was interested about that as well. I did look that up uh, when I was watching the movie. Mm. And I, I don't know. It's uh, He had spina bifida, I think it was. Right. And it, it was... I, I'm all for uh, people with disabilities uh, being on the TV and mm. working like that. I think, I think it's great. Yeah. But like I think it's Darren that said it. If if you put them in shit, then that's not going to play very well, is it? No, not really. You're going to be that person that turned up in that shit film. Yeah. So anyway, well, thank you very much for that. Anyway, Greg. Um, yes, good to hear from you again, sir. And um, yeah, good feedback. So let's move on. Our next piece of feedback is from the belly stapler, Michael Cornett, Leopold von Gruppenhans. Um, and let's hear what he has to say about this cinematic gem. Good evening, Black Doggers. Good evening to Lee, Darren, Jim, and Elton. This is Mike Cornett, the belly stapler. It's a chilly, rainy night in Baltimore, Maryland. I just finished Mac and Me. Jesus, titty fucking Christ. Um, <laughs> there was a, a line on the Family Guy once about how Brian and Lois were going to rent rent a bad movie and make some popcorn, and and Brian's like, "I'll go rent Liquid Sky," and Lois says, "I said a bad movie, not an abortion." Oops, I meant Vanilla Sky. <laughs> That's really what this is. Oh my God! I mean, this is just such a misbegotten thing from start to finish and it's and the fact is there's so much fucking product placement i mean this was cynically done by a corporation to sell their shit that's not i mean not always a recipe for disaster i mean when you look at the original willy wonka movie which you know is now a classic i don't like it but it's it's regarded as a classic i'll give it that 
and that was financed by Quaker Oats so they could sell candy. And the candy line flopped, but um, anyway, with this, it's like McDonald's and Coke and Skittles, and this is like product placement, product placement, product and Sears. Product placements as far as the eye can see. Oh, it's so blatantly commercial. It's sickening. It's like, it's hard to even laugh at it. And then those fucking aliens. Holy fuck. I'm sure they were intended to be cute. They're just fucking creepy. And I'm sitting there trying to figure out the best way to describe them. It's like, okay, maybe if they took, maybe they took like the, the house elves from Harry Potter and cross them with a burn victim. <sighs> or I think the best description I could come up with was they took the pale man from Pan's Labyrinth and crossed him with a sex doll. That, I think, wraps it up with you know just the big unblinking eyes and that white saggy flesh and that little O of a mouth. <sighs> Uh, it's just it's it's hard to even laugh at this movie it's just so wrong at it i mean it's like they they're just copying et so much except i think on a certain level they knew they didn't have the style and grace of spielberg you know as schmaltzy and manipulative as he is see there is a certain style and grace there instead they just threw in a bunch of electrical fires and car crashes and that big explosion at the end that just comes out of nowhere. And that stupid fucking dance sequence. Jesus, Teddy fucking Christ, where the fuck did that come from? Does that make any fucking sense? When was the last time you walked into a fast food joint and people are dancing around? <sighs> calm down, Mike. Calm down. Calm down. It'll be okay. Have a drink. Um. And the, oh, and the, the fact that Oh, poor Eric dies. And then the aliens bring him back to life. I'm like, oh, well, they can bring him back to life. They can't cure his spina bifida. So he's still stuck in the fucking wheelchair. Oh, what's going on there, folks? What's going on there? Um, oh, and just like all the, the really bad effects, you know, the scenes where the where the little alien is obviously on the platform or skateboard being wheeled around or... um. When he just sits there and watches poor Eric plummet into the water. And just that, that one scene. I mean, it's just so obvious it's a dummy in a wheelchair that they just threw off a cliff. Oh, that was the one laughable thing. That I have to say, that was the one laughable thing. But other than that, this is such a fucking turd. Oh, God. It's just... It is the biggest, smelliest, nastiest turd that I've done with you guys. Oh, I mean, that we've reviewed on this net lately. Is this the, your sad men thing? Or just, like, throwing turds at us? Oh, fuck you, Brits. Oh. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you guys. Love everyone. Uh, but I figure even with all my job woes and everything else... It can just get better from here. I just saw Mac and me. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, loved you all. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. This is this is this is it. This is our sad vent. We're not really chucking turds at everyone, but you know what? You know what? I think I think we're getting to that point now where we're just we're just watching the world burn. I think we've just got to the <laughs> point where like the tire fire that is two thousand and fucking 16 can just do one and we just we're just adding to it i think i think that's that's all you can do now isn't it just add to it <laughs> might as well go for the big finish yeah exactly i mean little short of like basically killing off harrison ford or you know don't don't there's still time there's still time isn't there i mean 2016 can't do anything more to us can it so we just thought no, it's getting up for the big finale yeah exactly yeah New Year's Eve 2016, the cast of Star Wars dies. William Shatner blows up. I don't know. Something's going to happen, isn't it? Sean Connery's dead. Jesus. Pat Patrick Stewart walks under a bus. I mean, something's going to happen. It's something big, isn't it? And horrible. <laughs> mm. 
and in the sky there's going to be one of those portentous comets. You can you just know it. One of those ones that just sort of like you know everyone will put in a tapestry in a thousand years time, and we'll all go, ah, oh, that's when it started. <laughs> that's when this within the apocalypse came. Anyway, uh, I'm just thinking that they're if they don't happen in 16, it's just going to kick off in 17. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? This is the inexorable slide towards death. Yep. We're just helping it along. This is the cheerful podcast, everyone. <laughs> welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, yeah, I know you got your your work woes, and I really hope it sorts itself out soon, sir. But, um... Yeah, don't worry. It will. I'm sure it will. It's got to. Something good and nice has got to happen to someone we know. <laughs> it should be you, sir. Def- <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, suffering Mac and me is kind of like an, you know, sort of like a group thing. So we're all getting that. Um, Right. Well, let's move on. Um, now, the next piece of feedback is from, he says, desperately looking down the list. Oh, it's Will Catlin Hallett. Um, Do- Fiendish Dr. Will. I'm not entirely sure if Zarish is with him, but let's find out, eh? Good evening, Black Dog. Good evening. Um, it's been a very long time since I've seen a wobbly spaceship. It was very wobbly. It's <laughs> definitely... Um... It was fishing wire. Yeah. This, 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 this is proper Thunderbirds level. <laughs> Space, space wasn't craft. as good as Thunderbirds. <laughs> um, kind of awesome, kind of terrible, uh, in the kind of this is awesomely rubbish. I have to admit, I have seen this before. I watched yeah. it not long after it came out. Uh, when I was at school, and this was a, a boarding school, they got this out of the video to show to the the how the, not to the, make a movie the kids. Um, so th- this was a, a weekend movie that was put on for us. Um, so I was age 10, 11 at that point, And, hey, we were being shown, a, we were give, <laughs> given a video to watch. That was fun. It's, we didn't get that very often. So um, I quite enjoyed it for that. <laughs> but you know what? It, I, <laughs> there, there's a lot wrong with it, clearly. And I'm not going to go into the whole schmozzle. But the, the premise is kind of interesting. And if you go at it with the whole suspension of disbelief thing, you can just kind of go, okay, we're just going to ignore <laughs> everything. <laughs> <We're just gonna laughs> ignore everything. But it's kind of interesting. Mm. I mean, we knew, didn't we, that something was going to happen to the kid and they were going to bring him back mm. because of all the electrical yeah. things and stuff. Um, so, yeah, notes that I wrote. Note what I wrote. Uh, Krita, that uh, lives in a, basically, a hoover-sized capsule all the way from Saturn to the Earth with no food and no drink but apparently gets really faint in the desert after three days without mm. a coke. Yeah. Interesting. Um and when they were moving house there was a you know like they've they've driven across the whole of America and the first thing I want to do when I've moved house is to start bandsawing bits of timber in the kitchen. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um Brittany's party who? <laughs> when? What day? Yeah. Where? Do you want to go to Britney's party? Yes. Yes. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. What? <laughs> um, uh, Alien Reads newspaper. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Instant speaking English. Yeah. Mother going out for a run and um, the Eric uh, wheeling alongside her wearing matching headbands. Mm, it was very 80s. It was very <laughs> 80s. Um Dance routine in McDonald's, obligatory. Yeah. Um, I know it's like that whenever that. I go in. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we, we do a dance routine. In well, yeah, we do a dance routine. We don't get that done for us when we have a birthday party, though. <laughs> Maybe we need to have you birthday have parties a birthday there. Birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen birthday parties there when you go in and you think, what are all these kids doing in the queue? I'm trying to go to the. You get a balloon, I think. Yeah. Um, a lovely moment where the, the creepy. Um, um, security guy who was following them who said, mm. follow them! <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's right, when they were staking out and it was yes. just like, so follow that car and it's like, you've just seen about three cars leave that building. Yes. Why have you suddenly decided to follow that one? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, and McDonald's pivotal role in sponsoring this film is mm. clearly 
awesome. Yeah. Um, yes, shit tons wrong with it. Shit tons right with it in a geeky kind of. No, not yeah. even geeky. Just klutzy. Yeah, I mean cult. it's. It's just let's let's remake ET with a guy with a kid in a wheelchair and props to them for having a kid in a wheelchair. Uh, excuse me. The best bit was that. He wasn't an able-bodied child playing the part that's, of a disabled. That's that what was I mean. Bloody that's, awesome. That's exactly my point. It's, Which for the eighties isn't bad. Yeah. Thing, actually. Um, I do have to point out. I I know. Um, I have completely forgotten who it was that posted up on the um, Facebook page the uh, Daily Motion video for this, split into two parts. I'm very amused by the fact that there are about half as many more views of part one than there are of part two. <laughs> Just told you how many people didn't bother carrying on to watch the rest of it. So that was quite amusing. <laughs> I think it it's better than The Room. It is better than The Room. It's a shit ton better than Birdemic. It's <laughs> uh, Jurassic Shark. Yeah. It's better than Jurassic Shark. Better, better than Jurassic Shark. So there's a lot of things it's better than. Let's put it that way. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Take Huge care. lots of fun. Good night. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, guys. Um, glad you enjoyed it in a kind of kitschy, laugh at it way. Um, I, I guess I guess I'm different. I I actually think the that watching the awfulness of the room is better than this. But you know what? Everyone's got their one, haven't they? So fair enough. Um, what was going to say the they they brought up something. Oh yeah, when they were talking about the um, the the bad guy, I didn't I didn't know, but he was called Agent Wicked. Agent Wicked. Yeah. Very eighties. Yeah, that's how bad he was. He was actually called Agent Wicked. I'm surprised he didn't have a <laughs> bunch of keys on his side as well. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't have a sidekick, Agent Boss and Agent Top. <laughs> Maybe Agent Skill. <laughs> yeah. Carry on the, the 80s slang vibe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agent Naf Naf. Yeah, that's right. Um, the other thing I was going to say was, which is, all these things, it's like flashbacks, listening to these guys and, and others, other feedbacks. The relationship between Michael, the, big, the older brother, and the um, older sister, that whole thing just appeared out of nowhere and you realize that that just came out of like um eric looking around the corner and seeing what's his face talking to her on the phone he just saw michael just talking to her on the phone going yeah yeah have you got a boyfriend no okay brilliant you want to go out sometime fantastic that's where i got confused because they've just moved to that house haven't they yeah so how do they have his phone number talking, introducing, any of that stuff. It all just came about from her passing him in the corridor, going, hi. And he went, hi. Next thing you see, next scene you see, there he's on the he's on the phone in his room. And he's like oh, just another pile of extra pile of arse on this fucking shit bean cake. I love the way that McDonald's forced her to to wear the uniform out in the desert as well. Oh God, yeah, I I it, I completely I didn't tweak that until I didn't tweak that until I saw the 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 bit with the, the alien as dressed as a bear dancing on the on the fucking countertop in the middle of the dance <laughs> scene. And I suddenly thought, oh shit, yeah, all the McDonald's people used to wear that uniform, didn't they? I, I didn't recognise the uniform. It was, I think they were driving back with the whole family doing the fucking Simon Says thing at the back of the, the van. Yeah. And it, it had a shot of from the shoulders up and you could see the logo mm. on her um, polo shirt and you thought, oh, fuck, fuck, stop it. We get it. We know yeah. it's McDonald's, yeah. all right? And the most animated, well choreographed moment of the entire film was the scene in the McDonald's. Apparently, according to IMDb, that McDonald's was actually a training McDonald's. They actually built one in the desert that they could train in and film adverts in. So there you go. Now you know. (laughs) 
all all enthused. Great. Anyway, wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Will. Thank you very much for that, Zarish. Um, yeah, I'm glad you were entertained, if not necessarily enjoying it, but entertained by it. Um, let's move on. So our sort of, well, we got two, three more pieces of feedback. The first bit comes from the Orgs, Pete and Anne-Marie, who do the Borg cast, which you can find on geekplanetonline.com. And they have sent in this. I bet they like it. I bet they love it. <laughs> At least you can laugh. Oh. <laughs> I have not had enough cider <laughs> to find this funny. Because uh, prob- there isn't enough cider in the world <laughs> for this to be funny. <laughs> this is a damp wank biscuit of a movie. <laughs> It starts with a fucking bad map painting, <laughs> cheesy music, <laughs> and Michael Gove using a McDonald's straw a whole to sp- drink from the ground. Yeah, a whole species of Michael Gove's. With no genitalia. He signed off on that design. <laughs> <sighs> oh dear. And then you have the... You see it coming a fucking mile off. I mean, I was even humming the theme tune to Heidi in my head from when Clara goes over the cliff with the wheelchair. (laughs) It was like, you know, fucking neon signs flashing away. And Michael Gove is just standing there looking and maybe might (laughs) help-ish. Eventually. Eventually. (laughs) Just let him drown a bit. (laughs) Let him drown a little bit. Yeah, it'll be fine. (laughs) You know, it's okay. I just rearranged the house, behalf the garden in the house and drilled some random holes in the walls. It's... it's (laughs) What was that about? Yeah, because reasons. You know, <laughs> it's important. And why can they be sucked up by fucking vacuum? <laughs> and why was there a Mars rover, whatever it was, using a vacuum cleaner in the fucking first place anyway? With a tiny, tiny wee hole and, and it managed to suck up an entire family of four Michael Goves. <laughs> What the fuck is that about? And then there's all the dogs. None of them are on leads yeah. anywhere, and it's just a load of dogs running around with Michael, tiny Michael Govey's tiny in a fucking little <laughs> yellow car, being noddy, being chased by dogs. And then, and then the family of Michael Goves, who, who are being somehow or other ended up in that cave, are healed by the healing power of Coca Cola. Oh. Yes, I'd, I'd heard this was bad for you know sort of being a McDonald's thing, but ultimately, actually, is that one dance pointless dance? Oh the, no, the fucking dance off cheerleader musical. <clears throat> yeah, fuck with bollocks <laughs> with Ronald McDonald as himself. Yes, <laughs> what the actual fuck was that? I mean, it, and there were but, some random American football players as but, well because it has to be a sports movie at the but same there, there time. There was barely a scene where there wasn't a can of Coca Cola on display. I mean, it was incredible. <laughs> It was... I mean, the, the annoying thing is I won't be able to watch Back to the Future again because because the soundtrack was virtually the same. And I can't... and you had the wheelchair, the guy, the kid in the wheelchair when he's holding on to the yeah. yeah. No, I just uh, now I'm not going to be able to watch Back to the Future without thinking of this travesty. <laughs> Do you know what is going to affect me? Well, Halloween. When she's there in that fucking slatted cupboard, I'm going to be thinking of the fucking vacuum cleaner scene where they're hiding away and she's got a crash helmet on her head and the next thing you know, she's on the fucking ceiling because the wardrobe's the same style. Anyway, that that was it, oh, that it was, was a thing. A, it wasn't a thing. It was fucking <laughs> awful. I mean, it was a terrible movie with a terrible soundtrack. It was like some oh, kind music. of fucking Glenn Medeiros knockoff <laughs> singing half of it. And a woman who couldn't even sing, who just sort of went, waves. And then he went, no, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. And it's just that. And then it became a musical and it was just terrible. I just, and, and what was with the melon? And he turns up, they've got no melon, fucking genitalia. Yeah. But they have to wear gendered clothes because reasons at the end. And and, and it's, I'm going to turn up in a store and the armed police might shoot me because I have a melon. <laughs> oh, oh, just... No. 
Wow, well, that, was, that was an incredible film. Thank you, thank you, Japs. I, I can't say thank you. <laughs> I don't blame you. We thought it would be a laugh to watch this, <laughs> and he was laughing yeah, all the way through. I'm traumatized. Just wait to see how bad it could get. There we are. Uh, thank you, chaps. Uh, we can't wait to see what gets worse than this. Cheerio, yeah, bye. I think. Bye. Bye. Um, now you won't thank us. Trust me, you won't. But um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, the joy in Pete's voice makes this all worth it, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. It does. That's that's, a, that's as a, close as we're going to get some Christmas cheer in this season, isn't that's it? That's right. He was he was genuinely taken with that film. <laughs> he was having far too much fun. I think that they. Uh, they sounded how I thought I would be with this film. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, oh, wasn't that just a lot a lot of crap where we could laugh and point and laugh and giggle about certain things. Yeah. And I think they took that from this. Yeah. But we, curmudgeons, just looked at it and went, oh, for fuck's sake. But the other thing is, I mean, I, I genuinely thought I'd have a bit of a rant and rave at this. You know, sort of like when, you know, sort of along the lines of what Michael was doing, you know, Jesus, titty fucking Christ, what have I just exposed my brain to? But, but I, I mean, after after an hour in fits and starts of watching it, I just was like, I, I, it's beaten me. It's a, just a film that's just so inept. It's just, I, 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 I all rage has left my body. It's actually just left me numb. It kind of hit its plateau quite quickly as well, didn't it? Yeah. And then stayed there. And I think that's what the problem was. There was no real roller coaster to the actual film itself. No. It wasn't like Birdemic where you spend like 20 minutes just following that guy down the street doing fuck all. And then he gets in and he just starts talking to a girl across a desk from about a mile away. And then says, hello, I work in the shop. I go, I do cars. And you sort of like, oh, Christ, what have we done? <laughs> you know, I mean, when that happens, you're kind of like, that's kind of, that's escalation of shit. But this just, 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 what, one minute, what, two minutes in? When, as soon as you saw goggle-eyed Big Mac sitting there with his fucking straw poking into a piece of dirt, getting water out of it, around Saturn, and then getting sucked up into a, 1950s space probe and somehow surviving the trip home it was just like yep i'm done thanks i'm mm. out yeah i've got nothing left already <laughs> you know i'm literally sitting there waiting for for the for the very end of the film and just looking for funny funny looking images but yeah so anyway thank you very much for that um pete thank you very much for that Anne marie um Good feedback. I'm glad glad you found it amusing, at least, Pete. Um, and you can hear more of them on the broadcast, which is broadcast.geekplanetonline.com and on iTunes and I think Stitcher. And you can hear Pete with me and Andy on Space Dog Jury. Um, but anyway, let's move on. The uh, penultimate feedback is from uh, Doug or Duck Cartwright, as he's known on the Facebook group, and Lou. Let's hear what they thought about this thing. I've, I've lost the capacity for rational thought now. <laughs> Release the ducks of war and cry havoc. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, this is our feedback for Mac and me. Yep, just finished watching it this very moment. I'm just going to say, I'm loving it. That's, oh come on! It's a fucking <laughs> McDonald's advert of a film. It is actually. There's a lot of product placement. Did you never mind oh, lots of it? One film. Ma oh, dancing. I think there's three items. Coke, Coke, Co Co Coca Cola, Skittles, and oh McDonald's, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah oh, this is a terrible, terrible film. Terrible. Why did you do this to me? I will say the the only thing about it that's really got me happy is the fact that I could sit there and take the piss throughout the whole thing. Yeah, it is so bad. It is actually. I suppose it, the only the only thing that we did agree on, which was quite nice, is the fact that they used a 
a real... Oh, an actual paraplegic in the, in the role a, yeah, of a paraplegic. A real disabled person as well. That the mum... Which was a bit, you know, you, you don't see that in films these days. You, you hardly see it, do you? No. No, no, I mean, that is... That's like, off to him for that. But that's it. Oh, we've gone through the... Pl- <laughs> that, that is the pluses. That's it. That's the end of the pluses right now. <laughs> right, negatives. Easy. Acting. Mm. Acting. Special effects. What the fuck is going on with the story? Yeah. Is there a story? Oh. The men in grey, not the men in, the men in grey, oh, run run by Donald Trump, yeah. or organised at least. Look at the comb over on that man. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> The dad alien walks around like he's got watermelons for testicles or he shat himself. Yeah. They whistle a lot. Yeah, they do that wolf whistle, don't they? They do whistle. They, they do like, whistle. Dorty. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky <laughs> humans. There's supposed to be some sort of affinity between uh, Eric and Mac, and yet you they spend no time together, no. and then all of a sudden they're best mates. Yeah, you don't see anything grow. It's the, it's the Elliot E.T thing but with no fucking story to it no there's nothing it's always oh, awful it's citizens it's... for the aliens at the end. skip the rest alien citizenship they can't speak <laughs> they can't speak <laughs> blue suit pink Cadillac earrings oh, on the mum fucking hell what is going on with this uh, and, and and by the end you establish that the one they called Mac Mac is a baby he's a child why the fuck has he got bubble gum what that's we'll, a token hazard. We'll, we'll be never mind that. We'll be back. I fucking hope not. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. It can only go up from here. It can only get better. I guess all I can say. Fucking hell, that film. Anyway, thanks very much, guys. Can't get that hour and a half back. Love you all. Thanks. Jesus Christ. I fancy. I need. A, I need a happy <laughs> no, meal. Just, just finish it, babe. Happy That's meal. It. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's so bad. There you go. And oh, well, just just have a coke. Sit down. Chill out. <laughs> that would be fine. <laughs> Honest. No, I, 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 you honestly think it's going to get any better. It, it really isn't. We thought this would be the one that would be quite light. This was the light starter. This was, it was the meant kind of, to be. It was meant to be. It was meant to be the hors d'oeuvre, wasn't it? Yeah, it was supposed to be the kind of sort of warming up. Well, I just, I think we've made a terrible faux pas. I don't know about anyone else. Jim, have, have we have we have we overstepped the bounds? Um. Well, <laughs> we did say that it has a lot of good films, and we needed to balance the books. Yeah, I know. I I, I feel like I feel like we <laughs> we certainly have, haven't we? Yeah, we've, done that. we've succeeded so far. <laughs> yeah, we've we've balanced being on the ground for a week for a week by throwing us off the top of the fucking shard. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway okay well thanks very much that guys um good feedback and um yeah it's not gonna get any better um so let's 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 move on to our last piece of feedback which is as you know tradition dictates drew and tracy so let's hear what they thought about mac and me i bet they liked it so we've just given mac and me a go Yes, we did. And what did you think of that? We spent the last ten minutes in total We were crying, wasn't we? And it wasn't because the disabled kid had just died. Oh, my God. No, we were in total hysterics for like the last ten minutes. Because we were just laughing at the whole thing, just wasn't we? Just because it was so daft. Um, this yeah. film was nuts. You can see how they've so tried to model it on E.T., but they have just come short in every respect. This just had me roar with laughter. Yeah, pretty much like half the way through it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it was, and it's it is pretty awful. I mean, you know, it's just. <laughs> I was terrible. waiting for like the endearing moment when like <laughs> it, Eric and like Mac kind of form their bond and stuff like that, and it didn't happen. And it was just like you're an hour in, and like there's nothing there yet. Oh my god, my I was expecting a little bit too much from this film. Yeah. But you kept saying, "Oh, it was they've they've based it on ET," so I was expecting <laughs> something quite endearing. But actually, no, should we go with some points? Go on. Then. Why does the family live in a house fully made of wood? 
That's very true. It's not like everything's made of wood, isn't it? Like the taps and the cutlery and everything. I don't is know made the wood. cutlery, but yeah, the taps and like all the furniture is all made of wood, and especially in thing. California where they're like prone to fucking forest fires and stuff like that. Yeah, that house is going up, baby. So I just think they went all out with their special effects in like the first ten minutes. There was no special effects in this film. Well, they had like the Dot Matrix um, ring around that planet to yeah. start with, but they spent all like their two pound fifty budget. In the first 20 minutes, I think. And it was just like, oh my God, this film can't get any worse. So for me, and I know this is really nasty. <laughs> the aliens, right, or the Makamees, right, they look like them, you know, them kids that have that really <laughs> nasty... <laughs> Don't laugh the bastard. That really nasty debilitate, debilitating disease where they age like 90 to the dozen, right? They did, though. That's what they've modelled these aliens on with I, the bog eyes. I think you've been a bit cruel. I think if you've got if you've lived your whole life eating skittles and drinking coke, <laughs> that's what you end up looking like. They were isn't buzzing it? like no one's fucking business, weren't they? With all the e numbers they are going through their system, but that's what they look like with their their aging skin. Oh, I don't know. Was it just me, or did they walk look like like they'd shit themselves? I'm sorry, that dad has some hip problems going. On. <laughs> going on there, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Stop laughing. We've done this for like the last 10 minutes. Hello, hello. Yes, we need to rein it in. Oh, God. So we did notice that the dancers' trousers when they were in McDonald's, and I want to go to that McDonald's because I've never been to a McDonald's where everyone breaks out dancing and Ronald McDonald was there. <laughs> That's every McDonald's shit for me. Everyone just like funking on down. But... The dancer's trousers was the same wallpaper as in Eric's bedroom. Yes. And what yep. did you call it? Graph paper. Yeah, you called it, it graph yeah. paper, yeah. yeah so you need to either bedroom. sort out your trousers or sort out your wallpaper. So, I mean, this, this it was just awful, wasn't it? Like, once again, terrible. It was shit. <laughs> Honestly, mac and cheese, big fries, and shit, mate. Yep. It was actually. What, I can't knock it too much because we did... Did you not say you'd seen this? I remember bits of it, yeah. And I'm like, where? How? Did I actually sit down at my like, request I think to, to I this, this is you one of your favourite films. Mm, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I've definitely seen this before because there was bits I was like, I know what's going to happen. But I think I must have blocked this out of my mind. Yeah. Because I can't remember when I see it. I think we should just leave it there, okay? It just, it made me raw. It's not the worst one. It, it's not, I, I, know, I said to you when we started this, it's I was a bit like, of a birdemic thing. It's so bad, it's quite yeah, funny exactly. in places. I did say to you, this is probably going to make me <clears throat> either swear a lot or just get really angry. But actually, it made me laugh quite a lot. I was laughing, but not because I, the film was funny. No, no. but Because it was so it was terrible. So but yeah. that made it enjoyable. So. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I, I quite enjoyed myself rocking out okay, here. Okay, anyway, fair enough. Let's leave it there, then, yeah? Yep. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye. Uh. Nice, nice, nice finale there. Thank you very much for that, Drew. Thank you very much for that, Tracy. Um, yeah, the dad did walk like he looked like him shit himself. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. With his Saturday Night Fever hip walk action. <laughs> um. Yeah, I... Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it is. It's a, it, the whole film is just a warning against just eating nothing but sweets and sugar. Really, you, you cautionary will, tale. Yeah, exactly. Cautionary tale. You will look like some wonky-eyed alien that looks like Nicky Lauda has put his head in a fucking spin dryer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go. It's um, yeah, it's I don't know. I I'm glad we ended on a laugh. I'm glad that they laughed and laughed at it because otherwise this would be one of the most dour, depressing fucking podcasts we've ever done. Yeah, this was a an experiment that w- didn't have the um, results that we were actually expecting. Yeah, we was expecting a bit of laughter, a bit of tears, a bit of sort of ha-ha-ha laugh at it, pointed birth- birdemic style, maybe a rant or two, but yeah, we ended up just all feeling very just sad for the state of the universe. 
Yeah, I'm glad a couple of them found it funny. Yeah, in, that's in what we places. should have done. So that, that's that's good. Mm. Anyway, well, maybe there'll be more luck next time, eh? But um, yeah, next film. Let's open up door number two. And what is door number two? Well, sitting behind it is a is a festive Christmas treat for you all. Yes, it's it's got it's got Father Christmas in it. It's got Interstellar War. It's got Aliens from Another Planet. It's got the production values of your average Blue Peter episode from 1976. It is the infamous classic Santa Claus versus the Martians. Yes, I say it again. <laughs> Santa, Santa Claus. Claus conquers the Martians. Oh my God, conquers the Martians. Thank you, yes. Jim. <laughs> From 1964. <laughs> so there you go. So um, you can all thank um, you can all thank Jim for this one. <laughs> Yep, this was my fault. <laughs> yeah, if I'm if I'm going down for Mac and me, this is uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, so uh, and 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 obviously we can all thank Chris Johnson for his um, immense googling skills for Mac and me. So um, I'm sure he'll be employing them once again on the Facebook group for this one. Um, yeah. So it's Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Uh, I I have never seen this one. Um, Elton? I've never even heard of this one. Okay. Darren's not here. Obviously, he's broken off for the, uh, for Sleepy Buys for his early starts. So, um, Jim, I I take it you've seen this one? I think I've seen this two or three times. Oh, my God. (laughs) God. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I first saw it a long time ago, um, in the early days of, uh, Channel 4 in the 80s when it was a new channel. And it wasn't just all Big Brother and Friends repeats. And uh, <laughs> they did a season of films um, that were all Golden Golden Turkey Award winners. Oh, great. And, and I first saw this film then, having just having heard the title in books and going, I've got to see this. And it was awful. <laughs> and then uh, several many years later, I sort of uh, I had to track it down and see it again just to make sure I hadn't hallucinated the whole thing. Mm. I believe I talked about it in one of my early Christmas specials. You did, you did <laughs> on Hypnagoria. Appalling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is appalling. Um, however, having suffered Mac and me, um, I think it's actually uh, probably slightly more entertaining than what we've just endured. So. Oh, dear. Okay. So that's damning with faint praise, if ever there was <laughs> some. Um, brilliant. Well, um, I don't think Darren's seen it, though. Yeah, we'll find out next week. So, um, before we go, um, gentlemen, would you like to, uh, you know, tout your wares? Is yeah, that... definitely. Yeah. yeah. Shall I go first this yes, time? Yes, you go first, Elton. Go for it. Okay. Uh, you can catch me on Shonky Lab, which is shonkylab.com. And this week, this Thursday, I will be uh, hosting an episode where we are talking about game shows. And we'll also be putting to bed the scone versus scone debate. Nice. So that'll be this this Thursday, 9 o'clock. Mm. Uh, catch it there. Sadly, I can't attend, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid uh, there's a space dock thing going on in a pub. We've, ah. So I'm sorry about that in advance. That's all right. That's that's fine. It's fine. Anyone who wants to pop along, you're more than welcome to Skype in. So all the details are on the the Facebook group at the moment. Brilliant. Brilliant. And Jim? Uh, Well, you can hear me this week on my own show, Hypnagoria, where I've been talking about the strange case of Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Brilliant. Seems seems to have gone down an absolute storm. Was indeed. (laughs) Very good. Uh, And um, actually, uh, there'll be... well, I'm getting into full Christmas special mode, and at the end of this week, there'll be two episodes released, do it, uh, which is a, a two-parter, doing the, a full commentary for all six episodes of The Box of Delights. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the next week, there'll be ghost stories for Christmas, as is traditional, and maybe maybe something else as well. Brilliant. Lovely. <laughs> 
Okie dokie. Well, um, that's it then. So thank you to everyone for listening. But um, before we go, just a little reminder to you all. Um, we have a domain now. Ooh. And so we will be moving our feedback to a to a different email address. Nothing too scary. But if you want to send in feedback, perhaps start sending it to feedback at blackdogpodcast.com so yes if you send it to the other one it doesn't matter you know it still gets through to us but it's just nice to have a dedicated email box and everything and it's just easier for me so um yes do send in your feedback to feedback at blackdogpodcast.com and uh yeah join us on the facebook group which is facebook.com slash group slash the black dog podcast and that's about it so from all of us over here to all of you over there thank you for listening and suffering and we'll see you all next time for santa claus conquers the martians till then tatty bye 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 see you later god bye i was waiting for darren again there <laughs> <laughs> to it.